Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new episode of the MinMax Show podcast, a place about f- games, friends, and getting better, and whatever else we want, because Ben is on paternity leave. I am Kyle Hilliard, and for the next uh, three weeks now, this week and two more weeks, uh, I'll be hosting, and then we'll have a, a mysterious new temporary host that we will announce at some point. Uh, here today, we have Jeff Marchiafava. What's up, Jeff? That's me. I'm here. Jacob Geller. Hello, I'm in a new room. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Janet Garcia. Hello, I'm also in a new room, but it's a different new room than the one that that Jacob is in. We're not right. podcasting from the yeah. same room. Right. Yeah, you guys are on literally room. opposite ends of the United States, I, I believe, almost directly, right? Yeah. And then uh, Leo Vader. How's it going, Leo? Great. I'm also in a different room. That's what's <laughs> going on with that. I know. It's a room cast. Jeffem's the only consistent one. I showed off uh, weird new elements in my room in the backstage pass, but Jeffem, you know, old standby Jeffem, we call him. I know, I got to change it up. I, actually, the room did change a lot because we we put in a whole new desk uh, for my wife, but you can't you can't see that part. Yeah, I think well, I think Sarah mentioned that we should do a new show plus option should just be like studio tours where we all show off our, our yeah. places and. Yeah, can we wait like one month on that? Because I just moved and currently my studio (laughs) tours. Look at all these pictures. They're on the ground. I haven't hung them yet. Yeah, you're doing something new. You know, that's the new, that's the modern sort of uh, your generation. We they don't hang uh, art. Minimalist walls, (laughs) maximalist floors. There you go. (laughs) Well, let's see. So today I'll talk. I'll talk very briefly about Pikmin Four. I talked a lot about Pikmin One last week, and Jeff joined me and talked about Pikmin Two. But I just want to say a little bit about Pikmin Four because there's a demo that's online. I've been playing it, uh, and then the the core of the show this week is the now annual, what we were calling uh, because we couldn't remember what it was called internally. We were calling it the auction. <laughs> It's like we're like, what do we call that thing? And then I did go and check out an old episode, or rather the episode specifically where we've done this in the past. I think this will be, gosh, maybe the third or fourth year in a row we've done this, where it's the 2023 release calendar six shooter duel. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this, the way it works, that we've really cemented these rules and we always stand by them and they never change, (laughs) is that... Everyone has an imaginary six shooter gun with six bullets. And we're going to run down the list of almost every game that's coming out uh, up until the end of the year. Um, and, and what we're going to do is if you want to claim that game as yours to play later this year, you use one of your bullets and you say bang and you shoot it. And it all makes sense somehow. I, it, <laughs> It's not confusing at all. By killing the game, we like, gain the that's game. Right. Well, I feel like yeah, Kyle, why don't you talk about Pikmin first? Because like we got stuff to figure out about sure, yeah. these duels. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look, that's a great point, Jacob. Um Pikmin 4. Like I said, I just want to talk about it briefly. I, I have been playing the full game. I can say as much. I, I can talk about like the first two levels. There is a demo online that's free on switch which is nice nintendo is doing that pretty consistently now and all your progress comes forward basically i the thing that i really just want to highlight with pikmin 4 is that you have this dog ochi o-a-t-c-h-i and he is awesome like in the trailers they've introduced him they show him how he works and everything but uh his his big hook is like you have all your pikmin like up to 100 of them and they can just all ride on ochi's back which means there's so much less managing a giant crowd of Pikmin, which is cool. Like that's one of the you know charming things about Pikmin is you have this giant crowd of like you know basically bugs behind you that help you. But then with that comes the 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 annoyance of having to manage a huge crowd and them getting stuck on corners and stuff like that. And the big, it's it's just one of those things that I didn't think would be a big game changer for Pikmin Four. Where I was like, oh yeah, that's cute. You have a dog now, and I guess he is powerful and he helps you fight and stuff like that. But being able to press a button and have all the Pikmin jump on his back and put all of them together and still have full access to all your Pikmin as you would normally really changes the game in a way that I really like. Uh, and that's that's really all I want to say about Pikmin 4 until I can talk about review thoughts, uh, which will be happening in the next uh, few weeks, I think. Ochi is cool. And you guys should be excited to hang out with Ochi in Pikmin 4. <laughs> when Ochi isn't dog? on screen. 
People should be saying, where's Ochi? Exactly. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Leo, you cannot pet Ochi unless, unless uh, as far as I know. Blew it. But um, I think you pet him in cutscenes sometimes. And, and the way the game works is you play it a day at a time. And so every morning there's a cutscene where you jump out of your spaceship and Ochi is very excited to see you. And he runs up to you and he like uh, runs circles around you. It's adorable. It's Please great. pet me. Why yeah. don't you pet me? <laughs> But he's like three times your size. I guess I guess you could still pet things. So that are Clifford's like still getting you. pets, and he's That's giant. That's big, time. Time. big time. It's true. You guys all make good points. Jacob's telling me to go ahead and talk about Pikmin. Jan is pointing out <laughs> Clifford. Let's dive into the 2023 release calendar six shooter duel, which was born with the idea the duel, the guns, the dueling comes from the idea that two people might want the same game, and then you have to duel each other to see who wins. But then you can also just duel nobody and shoot your gun to win a game. <laughs> we decided at some point. Uh, Janet, yeah, you raised your hand as though you had a question. No, that was me showing off my fake gun, which I made. Oh, fingers, okay. I thought. So. Okay. Yeah. I thought okay. I'm, uh, I'm raising you know, my hand as if I have me. a question. Okay. Yeah. Full full hand. You know, if you pull down the two fingers, right? That's a that's a gun, but a full hand. Then that's you're a armed. Question. That's yeah. right. <laughs> you're armed with your arm. Yeah. You uh, yes, Jacob Geller. So so how how do we proof that we should win the duel is it just who bangs first or is there it, 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 are we are we arguing for our uh bullets ability to be stronger than the other person's bullet yeah it's like two kamehameha blasts you know coming at each other and then whoever is just more passionate wins which is i believe how it works in dragon ball as well is the person who believes in themselves more usually wins it's not a matter of training, et cetera. But yeah, that, that's one of the right reasons. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah it, it's who wants it more. Yeah. It's, you have to argue why you're more excited about it. And maybe sometimes you realize that, you know, you just <laughs> need to get in the way of the bullet so that someone else can have more fun uh, in a couple months. And that's, and that's and, the name of the game. And the rest of us decide who was more passionate or the backstage pass chat decides? Oh, I, I actually would love to have the backstage pass chat decide. That's how we've done it in the past. Um, which maybe we can have someone keep an eye on that. Let me see. I have it open already. So yeah, we got pulled up. To... Okay. Yeah. If you guys if Janet and Jeff, I mean, if you guys want to keep an eye on that and, and kind of get a lay of the land of who people think is winning, you know, that's, they will be the ultimate deciders. Right. And we call and... this the auction because historically, you know, you've been bidding on things, but the six shooter thing is just like to simplify how much currency we have and how we use it. Yeah, you basically there are six games. You have six games that you have to pick for the rest of the year. And if if you lose your you know, to if I lose something to Leo that I really wanted to play, then I'm just out of luck. I don't get to play that game later this year. Then but you get your bullet refunded. <laughs> yeah. That's as, right. You do. as is true in real duels. <laughs> yeah, that's tradition. Right. Yeah, I think that was in Hamilton, right? They talked about that was like the the list of rules. Yeah. I think the last one was talking about the bullet refunds. Yeah. <laughs> love that song okay are you guys are you guys ready to dive into this anybody else have any more questions i i think jacob you're the only one who hasn't participated in one of these in the past i think does that feel right i haven't so okay uh, <laughs> yes okay great 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 <laughs> all right okay so we're gonna start with july you guys ready uh by the time you're listening to this podcast this game will be out and of course it's guilt the formerly Stadia exclusive game now on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, PS4, Xbox One, PC. Guilt with a Y, G-Y-L-T. Okay, I have a question already. Yeah. <laughs> um, there are a lot of, I assume we're looking at the Game Informer release calendar thing. There yes. are a lot of like re-releases on this or like this previously exclusive thing is now coming to that. Yeah, I've or, pulled the list quite a bit. I've tried okay. to get rid of those. I tried to get rid of things that are like, oh, it's coming to PC, it was on PlayStation, and vice versa. Uh, th things of that nature. I've also cut a lot of, um, you know, maybe games that none of us have really heard of or anything like that. Uh, and yes, thank you, Jacob. Uh, I am using GameInformer.com slash 2023. That is the list uh, that I'm pulling this gigantic list of games from because that's a great list that everyone should you know visit that website and refresh it <laughs> but don't refresh it too fast or else the bounce rate will that's be right really exactly high 
That's the key. Okay. Uh, guilt's a pass. No one's no one's shouting bang on guilt. Did uh, it get good reviews on Stadia release? I think Leo. I think I may be the only human being that played that game, uh, <laughs> and I I thought it was actually pretty cool. It's not bad. It's like a horror game. Uh, I'm not over the moon for it or anything, but I am happy. I, I wanted to call it out because I am happy to see it leave uh, Stadia and finally come to some other platforms. It's, it's what, kind of in what, that little nightmares sort of uh, genre to a certain degree. You know what? What happens to games that no one uh, no one shoots? They just live on in the yeah. hearts of. They just ride off the population. The, They're doomed the to sunset. roam the earth. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I mean, there'll be a lot of these that we that we uh, that we that live to see another day and that's fine we're, we're happy for them gotcha okay how about the legend of heroes trails into reverie on july 7th rpg series uh it's like the new one uh, jacob that you're not you're not clamoring for that one <laughs> i was just thinking should we have like a like congratulations you've been spared <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah right can someone hit the spared gong that's right uh, okay, this one may, maybe there might be a taker for this one. Um, Oxen Free Two Lost Signals on July twelfth. Bang! Bang! Oh! Oh! oh time, now I have to shoot Leo. That's my second bullet. <laughs> You're just using two bullets for one. <laughs> yeah, right. one to get Oxen Free, and then one to take Leo out. That should be allowed if you did. don't want to debate. <laughs> yeah. So I think Janet shot first. So let's let's hear her argument. Yeah, Oxenfree 2 Lost Signals, it's the sequel to Oxenfree. This is developed by Night School, which was recently acquired by Netflix, but none of those are why I'm interested in playing this game, um, except for, I guess, the sequel aspect of it. Oxenfree 1, I thought, was very um, affecting and moving. I think it's one of the best and truest depictions of teenagers in video games. Um, and I think Night School, in general, is incredible at creating a narrative that feels authentic, genuine, and easy to insert yourself into. Um, I think a lot of people's hangups with the narrative genre is how stilted and sort of fake the experience of playing it can be, where it's, you know, you're in these situations and you have to pick from one of these dialogue options, and maybe you're thinking, ah, I don't, wouldn't want to say any of this, I don't want to do any of this, and you don't always get that freedom to react um the way you'd like to i think one thing night school does it's really brilliant is giving you the space to say nothing giving you the options to literally walk away from a conversation and have characters react to you doing that um this is you know bringing it back to the similar vibes of oxen free one but with a different set of characters and a different island um, but still using like the radio to like sort of tune in um for those who don't know it's like a supernatural vibe spooky game um it's not really a horror game but it has like spooky elements it's even though it came out, I think before Stranger Things, it has like kind of a little bit of that Stranger Things energy, small town group of kids, and I'm just really excited about this. I play everything Night School puts out, um, and this was one of my favorite narrative games ever, Oxen Free One. So I'm excited for Oxen Free Two, and hopefully they stick the landing on it because I do think sequels to games like this can be tough. Um, but yeah, that's why I'm excited for it. Yeah, Janet put it great. Can't argue with that. Uh, I, the, it's been a long ass time since that first one, but the dialogue system did really stick with me. It wasn't overly gamified or anything. It was just like, felt like you could really get in the rhythm of a conversation, like cutting people off if you needed to or yeah. if it fit or if you like were tired of hearing what they had to say or not saying anything at all. It like all felt like you were in a conversation in a way that very few dialogue systems do. So, But I'd let you... Janet have it. I was about to say, is one of you going to concede, or do we need to go to the chat? I'm catching my bullet as it came out of my gun and putting <laughs> wow. it back in. That's impressive. Oops. <laughs> is Oxenfree 2 still a Netflix game? Yeah, it's on Netflix. It's also coming to, um, sorry, I'm glad it's right here, PlayStation 5, 4, Switch, PC. Um, right, well I just know they, release. they basically said, like, ah, we're more or less done recently, right? But they're still... You'll still be able to play Oxen Free Two on it. Um. Oh, but the Netflix. I, I'm not sure what's going on, like with their relationship with Netflix or what Netflix gaming in general is doing. But they're very much still a Netflix game, but being published on other platforms as well, simultaneous release. So day one, you can play on uh, PlayStation, Switch, or um, PC, or on. I yeah, I'm. I'm more just curious of like what is Netflix as a publisher doing because they had some statement a little while ago where they were like, our game experiment was interesting. Yeah, We're I don't know. I'm not going to do that much more. I think oh, they okay. just didn't they just 
have like another game announcement. I feel like a day or two ago. So I'm not sure. Maybe um, I'm making up that they yeah, said that they were done. I no, missed so- that. I missed that sort of uh, them saying that. But I. I I don't know. I thought it was still I thought they were still sort of all in on it, you know, as all. Yeah, maybe maybe I maybe I just made that up. I don't know. We can we can look that up and bring that (laughs) back. I I still think they will say that in the next six months. I I don't know. I'm actually really this is I know we're getting like a little off topic from the, you know, shooting things. But um, I've been really enjoying their dabbling into games. Um, You know, Kyle, I know you're like a big fan of Point P. I've been playing that, loving it. I'm bad at Point P, though. It's taking me forever to play this game. It's tough. Well, you just got to get, it's one of those games you got to Yeah, it's a little grindy, but it's it's so fun. Um, They, I think, I forgot what game they just announced, but I was also looking forward to that. So I feel like they have a little bit of, they're bringing a little bit of heat. I was definitely nervous with the Night School acquisition, though, because I'm like, I know this is going to be good for them. Like, their games are literally kind of buggy, so hopefully Oxenfree 2 comes out smooth, but um yeah you know i'm not sure um they've had some solid titles come through i think this is probably the biggest game they've had um launched especially like a game that feels you know on par with consoles no offense to mobile but mobile experiences are just usually catered for more short sessions so like a big story game like this on mobile is kind of unique and like doesn't really exist in the space in the same way because apple arcade games aren't fair super long either so i'll be interested to see how this yeah. ends up hitting for people, but um, yeah, yeah, like I, I don't know if like to Jacob almost to kind of to your point or your perception. I don't know that a lot of people are playing Netflix games, but to their credit, I think the library is actually pretty good, and like what they've been doing is is has been impressive, and we'll see we'll see where that goes from there. But uh, okay, so that goes to Janet. Janet has Oxen Free too. Uh, next up on July thirteenth, ter- some uh, a game called Gravity Circuit, which is a cool looking uh, platformer, kind of Mega Man esque. Okay, let's see. I don't want to hype for that one. Okay, how the Exo Primal on July fourteenth. Bang! The, nice. Okay. Hell yes, Leo. No, uh, no competitors on that one, huh? I was, I was really considering it. This is like hammer cocked, but not gone off yet. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of where I'm at too. Like, it's I, I, I think it's a Game Pass game. I'm, I'm excited to sort of check it out. I'm not a big multiplayer guy, but I just like the absurdity of that game of what I've played so far. Yeah, I, I played the beta with Jacob and I wasn't totally blown away by it, but it was totally enough to like, if we get a free code, I'll, I'll sink a few hours into it. It's, yeah. it's blissfully stupid. Yes. Yeah. Uh, July 18th, Viewfinder. Bang. All right. I actually thought there would be more bangs on that one. I thought so too. People sleeping on Viewfinder. Um, yeah, Viewfinder is awesome. So I've, I feel like we've talked about it a good amount on the show already. Um, certainly, we talked about it when we did our SGF recap of like what we played and what we liked. Um, Viewfinder is a PS5 PC game, again, coming out July 18th. It's essentially a first-person puzzle game. You know, think Portal, think Superliminal, think Maquette um, in terms of nature, style, and mechanics. What the shtick of this game is, is you have a camera and you can take a picture and then you can impose that picture onto the environment and it becomes part of the environment. So it could be something as simple as you, you know, or sorry, you don't take a picture, you pick up like a pole, or maybe I guess you do take it, but you use Polaroids to sort of create these environmental assets and textures into the space. And it can be as simple as I put down a doorway, now I can walk through the door, or it can be, you know, I take that same door, but I turn it and now I make a bridge, or I stack a bunch of different ones and create like a staircase or I, you know, do all these different things um, to manipulate the environment that you have. And it kind of plays with art style as well in an interesting way where some of the Polaroids will have like a totally different art style in the environment that you're in. So you're kind of mixing and mashing all these different things together. Um, It just has that classic quick hit delight of puzzle games of that ilk. It's a little mind bendy, allows you to be creative. And I think it just seems really well done from what I played um, with my like brief hands on session, with seeing the trailers, with hearing the continuous buzz now that a demo is out of this. Um, I think it's a game that I'm really going to enjoy. So that's why I shot it. <laughs> it sounds so weird, but that's why I picked this because I think um, it's going to hit. You know, I loved Maquette. I love Superliminal. Admittedly, I think I end up holding those games to a higher like score than 
some others do, like the general public does. Like they're a Metacritic and Open Critic tends not to hit that wild, but I really, really love games like that. Um, there's not a lot of games out like that. So, um, and I think it seems like it's doing it really well in ways that are adding a bit more to the space than, no offense, like maquette in the sense of like, okay, you kind of, you get a lot of these and you start to kind of see what the answers are. Um, you know, talking to peers, Viewfinder seems like it still has like a lot of tricks up its sleeve. So I think it's going to be uh, a really fun one and a big indie hit of the summer. I think it's going to be the indie hit of the summer. Boom. Oh. Viewfinder. I got it. It's That's in a my, big call. It's in the yeah. chamber or the roster. The only reason I don't uh, fire my weapon on that game is I just, because I, it does recall to me the games you mentioned, Super Liminal and Maquette, which both of those games for me were like the first 30 minutes were like, this is a crazy. And then the next four hours were like, Eh, okay. That's <laughs> was, and I, and I worry like, Viewfinder is going to feel like that too, but we'll see. No, it totally could. Um, which, like, I'm afraid of, but, like, I'll go down with that ship. Yeah, like, I did it sure. before, you know what I mean? Like, because Super, Super Liminal was so good, and then I got to, like, that final fourth where everything's white, and I was like, this sucks. Like, I hated the ending <laughs> of that game, but so many moments before of, like, stuff with, like, the rubber duck and the diet soda, like, it, it was just such a blast still. Um, yeah, I'm hoping I'll still have a really good time, even if Viewfinder ends up yeah. having a hard time sticking that landing. Yeah, well, unfortunately, I won't be able to play it because you claimed it. So thanks a lot, Janet. Uh, Pikmin 4, July 21st. Oh, I forgot about this game. Oh, no, I messed Bang! Up. I'm going to I'm gonna fire my weapon on Pikmin 4, but I'll only lose one Pikmin, hopefully. Good quick Surprise. correction there. I saw, the, I saw where you were going, and I saw you <laughs> take another path. It's very smart. No, te- no, other t- no one wants to fight me on Pikmin 4. You're I... all going to regret this. Tell I would, but I don't want to. I've already wrote out some other games. But I <laughs> tell me about Pikmin Four and why you're excited about it. I'm I'm looking forward to this. I know we had our big Pikmin episode like yeah. one to two, or every week is Pikmin Week, basically. Yeah. Um, when Kyle hosts, it's Pikmin time. <laughs> yeah. Um. Like I loved playing Three Deluxe. Um. With my boyfriend Isaiah, we co op that and had a great time. So I'm I'm definitely looking forward to this one. But why is it bullet worthy to you? Well, I just I like like you said, Janet, I talked about a little bit at the beginning of this episode. I talked about Pikmin last week. I don't need to go in depth, but like I've like kind of recently finally admitted that I'm a Pikmin fan and uh, the beginning of Pikmin 4 uh, really a good first, you know, start like it makes me very optimistic. Um, yeah, I, I I didn't realize I liked Pikmin until I played played through Pikmin 1 like two weeks ago uh, and it was great. Let's move on to the next one. We got, yeah, we got to get moving here. Uh, let's see. Although July is pretty packed, uh, to be fair. So let's see. Uh, Remnant 2. Any takers on Remnant 2? Uh, the first one's kind of become a cult game. I played that at uh, Summer Game Fest, and it didn't ever really come up because I was kind of underwhelmed by it. Okay. I, uh, like, I beat the first Remnant, um, so it's like I will play it if i get access to it probably like it no, wasn't you, uh... if you don't shoot it jacob you don't you don't okay <laughs> well uh as it rides off into the sunset i'll think hmm maybe i'll try that one later <laughs> all right well let's see july 27th we have double dragon rise of the dragons which i believe is like a throwback double dragon game any beat em up fans here origin story that's yeah all right i'm a beat em up fan but not enough to shoot it yeah yeah, I'm not. I don't really like beat 'em ups. If I'm gonna be honest with myself, um, but you yeah, know, it's your next Pikmin. You know, you're gonna come back and be like, "This yeah, is my game know. of the year." That is true. You have to play uh, the original uh, first, though. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you July twenty, to. July twenty eighth, Disney Illusion Island. Another one we played at Summer Games Fest and we're underwhelmed by. Bro, I really? did not like that oh, game. No. Janet Wait, and I, I played I, co-op. Play I, I, I made the gun fingers because I, I love the idea of like a Rayman inspired. No, go ahead, shoot it. And then I'll tell you, I'm you, it. you wasted Boom, your bang, <laughs> bang. Every single one of those Mickey Mouse and his friends fired upon. Disney <laughs> Dead Eye. Jesus. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that uh, you were underwhelmed, but I am still excited to try it. I, I spoke with the devs at one point for a preview and got to see some like, you know, uh, off, uh, hands off. Uh, preview kind of thing they showed me a bunch of gameplay and um i liked what i saw but i have not touched it and that's going to make or break that game Mm -hmm. if the platforming's underwhelming then it's game over so cute art cute co-op hugging mechanic yes but yeah it was kind of like we're kind of a a underwhelming metroidvania like all the metroid elements are you running into walls you can't pass that don't really Mm. add much you know okay yeah it was a lot of that it also felt i'm trying to remember how i described it at the time 
I think like too heavy maybe was uh, you know Leo fear for to jump in if you remember emotionally but yeah yeah too <laughs> the emotional weight of the story was too much but um yeah if it didn't the jumps didn't feel good like I'm a huge platformer fan and you know I, I famously said that I'll play any platformer even a bad one this is one that I still don't want to play even with <laughs> that sentiment because it just was so slow so sluggish the level design was so un- I've never seen such good assets and such poor execution in terms of creativity of level design. It was really uh, like aggressively dull. Like I think that's the thing. Why it wasn't? It I, you could be bad and still be interesting. It was bad and uninteresting to me. So I don't I don't see a world where I'm yeah. this game up unless yeah, we'll see I, we'll see, no. I think we'll even if everyone liked it, like. I'd just be like I'll just be. Wrong. I have to I play it now. I've committed. So yeah. Yeah, even, well, no, even before what... Janet called it aggressively uninteresting, Kyle, you looked like the like the crying Wesley Snipes gun <laughs> meme. You were like, I have to. I'm sorry, Mickey. I just you look cl- almost like Rayman. I just have to at least try it. Rayman with arms. <laughs> that's right. When uh, I saw it, though, I was excited, and that's why I sat down to play it. So I get cool. the initial excitement. Uh, how about Venba? On July 31st, the cooking oh, game. I forgot Venda. about this one. Damn. The reason I want it, want to be on this segment every year is so I can personally find out what's coming out. <laughs> right. And I'm learning a lot. Never heard of this in my life. Yeah, it looks cool. I'm not, I'm not ready to, to fire my weapon on it. but uh, A short yeah. narrative cooking game. Yeah. It's really cool. Um, like, I'm not shooting it, so I don't want to talk too much about it because that's cheating the system. But... Um, yeah, it's a it's a cooking game. It has like, you know, heavy cultural ties and kind of is uh, an examination of the relationship between culture and food, like through a narrative cooking sim, which is like everything that I'm interested in. But I won't shoot it. So I'm a fake fan. <laughs> we still believe in you, Janet. All right, here we are. We're moving into August. Baldur's Gate 3, the PC version specifically on August 3rd. No, are you guys just trying to save it for Sarah? You guys can take it when she's not here. <laughs> All right. Baldur's it's a Gate. it's a heavy bang. You pull the it trigger is. and then you've got 200 hours of work following. That's true. That's true. Uh, let's Sarah see. just hit it with a sniper shot from outside the podcast. <laughs> mm. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Honorary uh, uh, assassination from Sarah on Baldur's Gate 3. Stray Gods, the role-playing musical on August 3rd. I think that's like musical. Yeah, I think it's former uh, Bioware folks, and uh, Troy Baker is finally singing in a video game. Although I guess he did that. He did it in Bioshock Infinite, but uh, he's doing some singing. And a lot of like multiple voice actors. Uh, Wrestle Quest, August eighth. Is this? We're probably a panel that aren't big wrestling fans, I assume. Yeah. No, but actually, I'm interested in this game. But (laughs) do I want to? This is tough. Okay, here's the thing. I'm in a dilemma because I. I don't know. Do I want want to shoot the games everyone else is shooting, or do I want to zag just for the content? You know, it's don't like, do it for the content. You should just zag. You, want to you should zag for the content. Oh, no, now oh, I got, the, I got gonna... the angel and devil on my shoulder. Oh, oh man. But which one's which? Mm. Mm, okay. Um. Damn. Going once. I don't know Wrestle what to quest. do. All right, we're moving on. I think on. it's a really fun idea. Yeah, like I'm excited like, for this game, but do I want to like, shoot it? <sighs> turn-based fights in the ring. It looks off. You know what? Bang. I'm going to shoot it. Right. Why not? Why not? Yeah, Let's follow. The hero we needed. Yeah. <laughs> Je- I, I do look at that game. Vigilante, maybe. I do look at that game, and it, and the thing I take away from it is, would this make me understand wrestling? Because it is truly something I do not understand. I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I just, like, don't. I've never engaged with it. I don't understand it. Maybe this would be, like, my avenue of, like, I sneak in with an RPG to kind of understand what wrestling is, maybe. You know? I don't think it'll help you understand the sense that when I talk to people in the modern era who like wrestling, they're like, I like it because it's like a play. And I'm like, I don't want to watch that. That's just me. You know, well, that, I mean, but that sounds that's what turn based combat is. It's a play. Like, I bet this this sounds kind of like a soap opera wrestling thing which yeah. is what wrestling is sure i mean yeah, i think it's going to be a little bit less hammed up you know this is a um skybound games published um title which like full transparency i've like worked with them before on like hosting jobs and stuff like that um but this looks really cool and it's kind of go- going a little bit more old school so my wrestling history is i used to watch wrestling actually all the time when i was a kid and i would do like 
the wrestling play fights with my brother and you know he'd like fake choke slam me and like we'd fight and stuff i mean he's like six years older so it was it was you know how it's already fake it was like super fake because he's like yeah. double my size like obviously he wasn't actually gonna like beat me up um so i was a big fan of that like at night as a kid like i would go downstairs and we'd watch like i forgot if it was wwe or wwf at the time i know they had the whole worldwide wildlife issue anyway it was like that old of an era and we'd like watch wrestling like late at night in like the dark of the with the tv illuminating the room and stuff so that's sort of my history and i think it is kind of hearkening back to a bit of that era and it's just a cool like the sprite art on this game is really gorgeous the um turn-based combat is pretty fun and they add a timing mechanic within the turn-based combat which personally i really like i know for some people that can get kind of tiring because you have to be like engaged in the combat more but i like being forced to be engaged in the combat more because it makes it more exciting to me rather than just like clicking what my input is or whatever i like that too Um, yeah so i thought they had a lot of really cool stuff like that they had like a whole like i feel like the mechanics were really layered without being overly complicated and the art was really beautiful so i'm into this game um and that's why I shot it. And also because Jeff told me to. Because I am. But I'm genuinely <laughs> excited about this title. Um, and I think I might have like drafted in one of my fantasy critics that like nerdo league that I keep talking about that no one cares about. But like I believe that this game is going to hit when it comes out. And that'll be fun. All right. Uh, Bomb Rush Cyberpunk or Cyberfunk, excuse me, on August 18th, which is the um, Jet Set Radio kind of spiritual successor. Oh, Looks yeah. Cool. yeah. I love this. Jan has done no time to put away her gun. Everything. No, I'm not. I'm not shooting it. I don't got bullets. Oh, Leo, shooting it. Bomb rush cyber. Jacob, punk. Jacob, punk. was that a gunshot? I see. I'll look. I'll bang it with the knowledge that there's no way I can win. Uh, I I think an argument for this against you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know much to say either. I think it looks cool. Yeah, I'd like to I'm... play it. Well, who gets it? I liked Jet Set Radio. It looks yeah. sick as hell. I've never played Jet Set Radio. I've also never played a Tony Hawk. My main attraction to this is the the, the art style and the music in the trailer. Yeah, I think, great trailer. I think I learned that fact at some point, Jacob, that you've never played a Tony Hawk. And that I know. Take away my me. gamer card. I'm a fake gamer boy. Yeah, no kidding. What's stopping uh, you from writing this wrong? Is it fear? Is it commitment? To it's the that there hasn't been a good one released in... 15 years the the remake the recent remake was good it was solid it was hard and i know they were always hard but i liked my little gba one that i played like, i played uh Marvel what GBA was that game was. roller drome roller drome was essentially my first uh tony hawk game i thought roller that game was hits. really fun roller drome is tr- way more stressful in tony hawk they're not shooting you while you're playing just that's the that makes yeah, but i'm good at shooting i'm much better at the shooting than the tricks mm. together we're right. one roller drome player i think well, I think we're gonna give Leo Bomb Rush Cyberfunk just because it is a game where you play as a character on wheels, and that seems like Leo mm-hmm. should be—he should play all those, right, Leo? Hey, thank you. Hey, Ki- hey, Kyle. Yeah. Did we skip past Atlas Fallen? Uh, maybe. I don't think I was familiar with that one. What's Atlas Fallen, Jeff? Uh, well, I'm gonna bang shoot it. Bang uh, shoot it first, as as I call it out. Um, it looks a little. For spokenish, as far as I can tell from perusing the official website for like ten seconds, uh, it looks like you're going around a giant world, um, skating on sand, which you blew it, Kyle, because that's kind of your oh. traversal thing. Uh, and then you're fighting giant, giant monsters. Um, yeah, and that's, that's enough cool. for me to say that might be cool. Oh, apologies to Atlas Fallen. I may have cut that one just uh, in the interest of shortening the list and not being familiar with it. And I'm sorry. I will never do that again. Well, you blew it. I'm stealing it and shooting it. Okay. I've written it down for you, Jeff. (laughs) That's right. Uh, Let's see. This always becomes an honorary mention every one of these episodes. Uh, But hey, maybe someone will surprise me. Madden NFL 24. I knew it. I knew it was going to be a sports camp. (laughs) Nobody on that one. All right. Uh, Immortals of Avium, August 22nd. Bang. There you oh. go. With, go. With magic hands. Zap. <laughs> <Right. There you laughs> with, with finger guns. Yeah. Why are you excited about this one, Jacob? I. So this is this is the Call of Duty, but with 
magic. I think Haley referred to it as "Oh, that hands game" on a reaction stream, which is <laughs> Ghostwire Tokyo. <laughs> yes, it's another one of those. Yeah. Um, I we've talked about a lot that the marketing of this game is doing it so few favors because they seem to be entirely focused on lore, which I don't care about because it's a fantasy world that I'm not bought into. But in the last trailer. They showed a scene where you were fighting on an enormous, like, human-shaped mech that was walking across an ocean and, like, punching ships out of the sky, like, while you were shooting on it. And that is a level of spectacle that I'm just like, all right, I don't need to care about the lore to be in for, like, that. And I do like, I like the idea of a, a... I don't know, more complex shooting game, maybe something more like uh, like Doom Eternal or whatever, rather than Call of Duty. And I imagine with all these like magic spells and whatever that they're doing, there's going to be like a good deal of strategy uh, in it. So bang, I'll take it. Yeah, no, what I think what this I... is. I, was just I think this is in the game. I... Oh, well, I was going to say first, actually, that uh, just in the <laughs> gameplay, I think they showed in the corner, there's like the little video of people talking, like in every shooter, of like popping up, giving you your objective or whatever. And this game has that, except you're holding an orb with your friend talking to you from it. Just like the magicification of every shooter trope is really, really funny. And I'm curious to see how it turns out. Yeah, I mean, that that's the lore stuff like could be engaging it's just what i guess all we're saying is like that being that being your foot forward is kind of weird when you have in your back pocket a giant like statue you know ghostbusters 2 style like walking through an ocean yeah that should be their marketing (laughs) we have a big statue yeah yeah i'm optimistic about that game uh but i won't be able to play it because jacob is playing it so oh well let us know jacob on august 22nd uh blasphemous 2 on august 24th uh, I didn't play Blasphemous 1, but it's like a cool looking 2D kind of Metroid thing. I, looks cool. I feel like I would be the one to uh, bang this. I really like the first Blasphem- Blasphemous one. Um, it's just since then, I mean, even before then, there are so many 2D Souls likes that I think are probably good that I should get to that I haven't. Um, and so this might go on that list, but. Um, <laughs> I like Blas- Blasphemous One is really good, and so I'm I'm excited to see what they do with this. But they're they're I, I'm saving my bullets. Right? Are you saving it, Jacob, for Armored Core Six Fires of Rubicon on zap, August zap, zap, zap. Oh, zap! He's zapping it. Like, I get more lasers. <laughs> uh, that is a genuine attack on Armored Core, right, Jacob? Uh, yes. No, okay, I'm making sure th- this is th- perhaps my honestly, my biggest bang of the uh, coming year is is Armored Core six fires of Rubicon, despite uh, never having played Armored Core one through five. Yeah, my I, I've really become a from fan over the last couple of years. That was a slow start. Uh, and I but the thing that like makes me a little hesitant is like I just don't really like mech games. I don't like playing as mechs. I don't like slow moving mechs and the customization isn't all that interesting to me. But uh, I mean, it's a from game. I'm very curious to see what it's like and how it plays. Um, yeah, so well, I here's the loved, thing. I would have loved to check it out, but unfortunately, it's too late now. I can't do that. Here's the thing. They're not slow. Uh, these games look yeah. way, way faster than Souls games. Um because you are like flying around at a thousand miles an hour and like strafing and doing stuff uh, over the past like four or five months, there have been two different YouTube channels, both Vadi Vidya and uh, Writing on Games, that have released like hour and a half long. I played through the entire Armored Core series, and so even though I haven't played through any of those games, I've watched both those videos, and now I feel like I understand. Uh, I, I've basically played them because I've watched three hours of YouTube videos about them. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm just really excited uh, for this. I think um, I'm excited to see From do mechanical environments rather than like organic ones. I think that is alone going to be super interesting. Uh, I bet there's going to be some crazy bosses. Uh, I'm excited to put a bunch of missile launchers on my mech and shoot them off. Hell yeah. Uh, Shout out to the current issue of Game Inform Magazine, which has Armored Core 6 on the cover. But not a particularly glowing cover story. 
That's right. Yeah. Uh, Blake Hester and Alex Van Aken played it and they have a lot of uh, positive things to say about it. But there were some things, uh, specifically the environments that they were kind of like, hmm, yeah, we'll see. I don't know. OK, uh, let's where did I leave off? OK, August 29th. Goodbye, Volcano High. Which I think. Right. Bang. Oh, wow. Oh. Right. I think it's like a um, correct me if I'm wrong, Jacob. It looks like a, a, a visual novel kind of right. Or am I it simplifying kind of, it too much? It's I, I it's it's a little hard to say. To me, it looks very uh, night in the woods esque. Uh, partially because it's like a band game, you know. Like the I think it is a visual novel, but I think it's also like about being in a band and about being an adolescent or in like a transitory period of your life or whatever. This game has been coming out forever. Like it's been in development for so so long, um, and I don't really know if that's, like, a positive or negative about the game, but, like, it just looks so pretty, and I really have liked the tone of the writing that they've had in the trailers, uh, and I've liked the music. Um, so, if I, and I also felt if I had big robots and magic gun hands, I should have, like, a, a more, uh, you know, gentle game about dinosaurs graduating high school. <laughs> yeah, we've Product played collection. a dozen of them. Okay, let's see. Uh, Samba de Amigo Party Central on Switch, August 29th. Fun, uh, fun rhythm game. All right, here's, here's another big one, maybe. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Uh, August 29th. Sea of Stars. Bang. Hmm. No takers on Sea of Stars but me. Sea of Stars is Too much the throwback RPG, heavily inspired by Chrono Trigger and games like Super Mario RPG. Uh, I, I admittedly, I got to play like the first like six hours of it for the recent Game Informer cover story, and uh, I was frankly upset that I had to stop playing. I I really like what I played in that game, and I'm did you swear at them for... when they took it away? Jeff, my cursed them out, That's and uh, they said they said don't don't call us anymore. <laughs> really beautiful pixel art. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, from <laughs> no, the makers, from the makers of the Messenger. Uh, a game that notably mm. had a strange twist about halfway through in it, where it went from like NES visuals to Super NES visuals. And though they would, they didn't say anything explicitly. They did tell me that there's like, you know, if you played the messenger and you thought that was cool, like there's some play sea of stars, you know, <laughs> mm. <laughs> I don't know. Cool. I, I don't know what that means, but it uh, goes from pixel art to VR. To v- <laughs> it's F-M-B. like, well, better put on a headset, even if you don't have one. Uh, but yeah, see if well, I'm now I'm disappointed I can't play it, Kyle. So yeah, yeah. If you like, if you like, uh, like 16-bit RPGs, like Sea of Stars is uh, very appealing. Uh, let's see, another August 29th one, Under the Waves, which uh, that's the um... Quantic Dream published. Yes, thank you, Janet. Yeah, Quantic Dream, I played which is it a very pretty SGM. looking game. Looks very pretty. You guys ready to move into September? Yes. Yeah. yeah everyone's got the. Uh, Jacob has shot three games. Janet has shot three. Jeff only shot one, and he like one snuck so up far. on them. <laughs> like, That's right. Stealth assassinated them. I had to hunt them down. Yeah, and I've got three, and Leo's got two. So that's that's where we're that's where we're at right now. Uh, September on September fifth, or excuse me, let's go. Let's do this. Is this right? September sixth, Starfield. I'm bang. I'm, I'm shooting. Oh, I'm I'm oh. shooting too. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking that? cover. Bang. I'm blind firing. <laughs> <laughs> is that really September? September? I was double checking. Apparently, oh, yeah. Games. Well, who is Mark excited? Jeff or Leo? I'm extremely I don't know. excited. Yeah, head tell us, Jeff. Um. Hit him. Uh, <laughs> I've been a sucker for Bethesda's big, dumb open world RPGs since Morrowind, since my first time playing as a little teenager. I ran out there, and within, like, 15 minutes of playing the game, I was running through the forest in my underwear, getting chased by, like, giant pterodactyls, and I thought, this is the most amazing game that I've ever played. I took off all my clothes because I was running out of stamina constantly, and I, I mistakenly thought that if I wasn't wearing the clothes, it wouldn't count towards my endurance. It was a long story. But since then, like... <sighs> Like, I acknowledge all of, the, all of the weak points of Bethesda games, and there are plenty of them that you can, you can go down the list and complain about things. 
But there's something about the way that they create open worlds and the the ability to just go out and get lost in the world and do whatever you want to do. I've never beaten a Bethesda game. I've I've never I've never seen credits on any Bethesda game for all the hundreds of hours that I've put into them. But I've I feel like I've done so much in them and I feel like the experiences that I had were so unique to me because you know like the 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 gimmick in in the big preview that they were showing was there was the lady who would go around stealing cheese you know grilled cheese sandwiches or whatever like that is how I play those games like I hoard I steal for no reason so that's that's what I'm really excited about here the fact that they have a thousand planets and they're going to be procedurally generated and I know that's going to be boring that's like another personal weakness of me like I loved No Man's Sky when everybody hated No Man's Sky before before it, it had its redemption arc and everybody now loves it. Like I just, even, even when it's boring, just that kind of open world freedom uh, really sings to me. And so I'm, I'm way more excited about it than I, I sh- even, even with all of my tempered expectations for the things that I know probably aren't going to work very well because it's still a Bethesda RPG. Um, I'm very excited for this one. Yeah, we have similar weaknesses, Jeff. Um, I, there's a there's a Leo that is like pissed about how bad Fallout 4 was at launch when I played it. Pissed about getting Skyrim and having the save on my PS3 balloon until I couldn't play it anymore. Uh, but th- then watching the demo where they're like, you can dock with any ship and and enter mm-hmm. it in space. That part of me it gets powered off immediately, and I'm just <laughs> I'm just simply going to buy it. Yeah. And the other little elements, too, from that demo, like uh, traits that can be negative that have the trade off. I mm-hmm. always adore that in RPGs. And these seem like substantial, like the having needy parents or the, yeah. the whatever. The, the adoring s- fan. Adoring fan. Thank you. Yeah, that stuff like game changing up to feel like you're having a specific story. You know, I love character crafting and role playing, and I feel like there's a lot of room for that in this. I think this might be one to take to the backstage pass to see great. who's winning. Let's go for it. Who won? It's a bummer because I, I kind of wanted to play this, but uh, I don't know. I'm not even going to get a chance, sadly. Who do Aww. you think, between the two of you, who do you think is going to, like, uh, in this imaginary world where you'd both get to play it, which we know doesn't <laughs> exist, like, who would spend more hours with it? Like, have either of you been the kind of, like, 100 hour 200 hour like save files or is it like you know fun for the 20 hours that you played and then you kind of drift away it's usually been like the closer to the 100 hour save files for me um that's what i figured i'm definitely more of the latter more of the i'll have a great 30 hours with it so that is a good metric here jeff i'm sweating yeah i know for I know for you, Leo, it's, <laughs> I know you, I, you love open world RP, like open world games, but you are also like a mechanisms guy. And I, I think this one probably will have better mechanisms than in past games, but it seems like you're more of the, uh, you know, like, uh, death loop kind of give me a bunch of weird powers that I can string together type of person. How dare you? I know. Yeah. I was thinking that too. No, I was accurate. like, "Wow, shots fired!" You're, no. you're just really more of a mechanisms person, like. Well, I mean, I mean, I, I don't. I consider that a, that a compliment more than any. Like, yeah. Like, How dare you? what I'm ultimately what I'm saying is, even if the gameplay is boring, I'm I'm going to be the one who's probably putting too many hours into it. Is what I would. So the right chat say. backstage pass, like I put up a vote. We had Crowboy Jeffum, The Alchemist Jeffum, Jarwar Hello Jeffum, Cat Jeffum, Stormy Ooh, Jeffum, Beat Down Brian Jeffum. Right. And then Stormy right. did ask a question, which I thought was interesting. Is so now the question is, will Jeffum be able to devote that hundred plus hours now? Uh, they had that he has a kid, but I'm like, you can neglect your kid at any time. I just want to know, are you? You think you're gonna be sinking yeah. in that kind of time? Oh, I will, I will abandon that child. Yeah. Tears of the Kingdom was eating I, up a lot of your time. I'm, Do you think you're going to yeah. make it? I mean, I've, I'm have i over 100 hours in Tears of the Kingdom. I've, I found the time. I found the time to be a bad parent. I can Exactly. I can there's again. always time. Like, what That's are right. we talking about? Like, there's yeah, always exactly. space. Just keep digging. Um, Do you think you'll beat Tears of the Kingdom before Starfield comes out? It's... It, it, as soon as I saw that it's coming out in September, it was like, oh, boy. The walls I gotta, are closing in. Yep. Yeah, I got I to gotta get on it. Hurry up. I can't have another Red Dead 2. 
you know. <laughs> it's followed uh, you for years. Congrats, well, you've weirdly, Jeff. you've weirdly I'm sorry. somehow committed to not beating Starfield uh, by saying you, you know, you, you've never beaten a Bethesda game, and this one's not going to be any different. But you plan it, so you know <laughs> that is that true. Should help you out a little bit. Let's all right. So Jeffum, Jeff Starfield goes to Jeffum. And, uh, you know, I, we, we need to start. This is how these always go, where it starts real slow. <laughs> we have to be like, all right, let's get through this. <laughs> we got a lot to go. Uh, let's see. Uh, Fay Farm, September 8th. Looks pretty cool. Bang. Oh, really? Really? Okay. All right. I was going to bang it, but uh, in out of respect, I, uh, I will <laughs> of, pass on this okay. one. Is, uh, is it the co-op-ness of it, Leo? Is that what's It up sure here? is. Uh, okay. Hell yeah. Absolutely going to be playing that with my sweetie. Yeah, farming sim kind of like, uh, right? Sort of that kind of yeah. genre. Magical farming sim. Um, right. Leo, now I wish you were, I think you were doing something else when we had that appointment, me and Sarah. But um, genuinely, it was like pretty cool. Obviously, it's hard to do hands-on with a farm sim because like, yeah. what am I going to do with these 10 minutes? So instead, they kind of just like walked us through stuff while we kind of just ran around and like clicked on things. But the systems were incredibly layered, and I loved how they had it. It felt like they really thought through the magical element in terms of how they structured aspects that are typical to that genre. So stuff like your, like decorating your space can affect your stats that then affect your like farming, or just the fact that like when you milk a cow, you like levitate it and like. Put we can't a little, talk like, about cow milking. Again. I know. Yeah. I I would like say it's like the, we only have. Well, oddly enough, there are weird, like, motifs that have been popping up in this show. But, like, it is what it is, you know? Like, this is the reality of what the yeah. people need to know about. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for context, right, there were just dozens of comments about the sort of <laughs> science of milking cows. Is that why Yeah, so, like, if you missed yeah. the last episode of the Minimax show, you should go back and watch it. Because you should listen to all the episodes. They're all really good. Um, but Sarah and Kelsey... Wait, 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 wait. About... We were talking about how we needed to speed up. Now we're going to relitigate cow milking. You're right, you're right. Go watch <laughs> it. Wanted... There's cow yeah. stuff going on. Uh, it's a whole yeah, I just wanted to give thing. a little context. Uh, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to. Here's what. Maybe I'll do like a bunch at a time and then I'll pause at the ones that I think are going to be, you know. All right. So we got a Super Bomberman R2 on September 12th. We have the Crew Motor Fest on September 14th. Gloomhaven on September 18th. Oh, bang. And- Blank, bang on which one of those? Bling. I Blank? the Gloomhaven. I played the demo of that. I think. Am cool. I thinking of the right thing? Is that the immersive sim? Great question. That's the throwback. That's the table, board game. tabletop game. That's. It's it's a it's the switch implementation of the PC implementate digital okay, yeah. implementation of a board game. Yeah. RPG. So you must be thinking of something different, Leo. Or maybe okay. Not. Yeah, I'm seeing hexes here. Can I? You want to shift that bullet, bullet back into my gun? Yeah, let's, we'll there, throw the yeah, bullet are, back in the chamber is, there. I, I'm, I'm going not to, all what I nothing thinking. against Gloomhaven, of course. I'm yeah. banging in that group, Kyle, before you, before you rush us on. Please, uh, bang I'm gonna, the group. I'm, I'm going to say, don't. <laughs> no, you, you did it. We were trying to avoid that. I'm going to say Super Bomberman oh, okay. R2. Hmm. The original Super Bomberman R was hot trash, and I didn't <laughs> look, care for it at all. <laughs> Um, but when I looked it up on the website, this is another this is another Jeff and weakness. Uh, apparently, it has a level editor now, uh, and it's going to be you can create your own bomber maps and then share them and uh, play other people's online bomber maps. And and I don't know if if I'm just now a sucker, but the it looks like it plays better than Bomberman R did. So I'm hopeful. I've always enjoyed Bomberman, and hopefully. They're not screwing this one up as bad as they yeah. did the previous. But never would I have R. guessed looking at this list that Super Bomberman R2 would be a, a banged game. <laughs> hey, you know, it's never maybe true. Maybe I, an explosion. I already got Starfield. I'm I'm going to be say. much looser with my bullets now. Yeah. And for the record, I was thinking of Gloom Wood, which is an immersive oh, sim that's okay. out now mm. in early access, and I haven't gotcha. banged it. <laughs> uh, all right, September 19th, Lies of P. With a, a steampunk pistol. Click. <laughs> bang. Yeah, I kind of figured you'd be going after that one. Uh, yeah. Jacob. I, I'm, I'm very, I did not play the demo, uh, but I, I want to try that game. I'm very curious about that game. It's such a weird pitch. That, that That's enough for me to, to take a gander. I do yeah, too, but it, we can't. Yeah, sorry. Uh, right, Jenna and I it. talked about a couple weeks ago um, a, a game starring Timothy Chalamet, who could resist? 
Um, it it seems it just seems like super super competent, which is like a weird sounds like a kind of uh, middling praise, but it's like a competently made bloodborne esque game is really hard to pull off and it's like the world is interesting and the combat feels good that's that's enough for me sweet all right uh september 19th mortal kombat 1 i don't know if we have any mortal kombat fans here i'm looking around not seeing anybody all right uh Bang, the yeah. bullet shoots through their eyeball and explodes and loops around and goes out their nose <laughs> and back into your chamber leo is that what you're saying or do you yeah wanna... that's my fatality <laughs> okay <laughs> uh, all right we got party animals on september 20th uh here's one which i, I eternites i'll b- bang i'm shooting eternites i played the demo it's a sort of it's an action game uh dating sim that's very anime-esque and uh i was kind of hooked playing the demo i was like i want to see where this goes so you know what kyle's gonna play eternites as his who fourth uh who made option. this it's like a new developer um it, they don't as far as i know they don't really have an elaborate history but like i said i played the first hour and it certainly has some shortcomings in the presentation aspects like just that the weird thing where like fonts look kind of cheap you know and like it, like you just but the gameplay and the sort of the characterization were like i'm i kind of want to see where this goes and that was that was enough for me want to keep going so eternites uh, September 21st. Also, September 21st, Payday 3. Hmm, uh, I'll bang that. All right. I, uh, I played Leo, that. Leo, how many bullets you got? He's got two I keep, left. I m- keep missing. Why, do I? I thought I have three games. You had Exoprimal, Bomb Rush, Cyber Funk, Fay Farm, and now Payday 3. Oh, yeah. Well, great. Including this one. Yeah, I watched a video about it recently, and it seems like they're leaning harder into the, like, stealth systems of th- things going different ways which is what i always felt like those games were missing i like them conceptually but it's kind of just left for dead with cops instead of zombies and i like it having a little bit more planning and uh detail than that that's really promising to me yeah more time uh before you start shooting to sort of scope out the the banks and stuff like that which is exactly uh mineko's night market september 26th my time at sand rock september 26th uh, Infinity Strash colon Dragon Quest: The Adventures of Die, oh, which is pals. which was a, a manga pals. based on a video game, right? And now that manga is being turned into a video game. It's like the circle of life for uh, Die D A I. All right, September 29th, Cocoon, bang, nice, uh, Cocoon. I haven't touched, but everyone who has had hands on with it says. It is really cool and plays really well, and it does have. It's not from play. It's not from the makers of uh, Limbo and Inside, but folks who worked on Limbo and Inside are working on this one. Which hey, that's enough for me. Yeah, hearing um, hearing y'all talk about it the other week was awesome because I saw that trailer and thought, I don't know about this. And then uh, d- did everyone play it who went to Games Fest? Leo, I don't I know if you did. Um, but, but uh, Janet, you and Sarah just being like, it rules. It feels amazing. I was like, great. I'm sold. All right. Disgaea seven, October 3rd, detective Pikachu returns October 6th. He's finally back. Everybody Forza motorsport, October 10th. No, we're, we're more of a horizon podcast. I think assassin's Mm -hmm. creed mirage, October 12th. Bang. I thought that I thought you might shoot that one, Leo. You like a uh, classic uh, Assassin's Creed? I do. Selfie? I know it's not going to look as good as that gameplay preview, but that gameplay preview looked really good, really smooth. You know, I like the new version of Assassin's Creed too, but there's like something really clean about the basic way you used to interact with everything. I don't know. Yeah. Looks like uh, something I want to spend time on. Yeah, looks cool. I I'm excited to sort of I played uh, the last one whose title is escaping me, the the Norse Viking one. Is it Viking? Valhalla. Valhalla. And I played a lot of it, and I liked it, but I did not finish it, surprising exactly nobody. Uh, Lords of the Fall in 2023, October 13th. Is that a Jacob joint? Maybe? I, look, I got Liza P. I, uh, <laughs> You're good. I'll take, I'll take the studio who's taking their first shot at it versus the studio who has fumbled 
several attempts at it. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a good. I mean, the Lords of the Fallen. I think people are, is generally the the reception is like, yeah, it's okay, right? It's not a disaster, but uh, okay. Alan Wake two, Bang. October seventeenth. Uh, yeah, Janet, I would totally <laughs> shoot that one if there weren't some other games on this list that I, I'm I'm down yeah. to one bullet myself. Kyle is not I'm shooting sure. Alan Wake two. Yeah, I don't have a flashlight, so I didn't light him up first. Well, <laughs> guess what. The mechanics aren't wow. nearly that wow. antiquated this time around, which is why I'm excited for it. Um, yeah, Alan Wake 2, I absolutely loved Control. This is a Remedy game, the follow-up to... I mean, all sequels, I guess. Um, not much of a risk-taker here with this list, but... Um, it's the follow-up to Alan Wake, which I tried playing the remake slash remaster of Alan Wake, and I found it interesting, but mechanically kind of rough around the edges. Um, seeing Alan Wake 2... Um, hands-off preview at SGF with Leo. It was just so affecting and cool, and I think they snapped with, like, the sound design, and it has, like, the weird... Uh, God, how do you say this without swearing? I guess trippiness that Remedy's kind of known for. Um, it has, like, a very eerie... You know, it's a survivor horror game, and it has, like, a great eerie kind of psychedelic aspect to the way it approaches horror um you still have like all the cool stuff of like the little collectibles of like the pages of the story and it's you know has a fun play on that and you can go to like your mind god what do they call the mind space the mind palace it's, it's yeah which is something deadly premonition did which is yeah. funny that that's <laughs> the, the lie that i but i but, but i guess they're both very twin peaks inspired yeah universe, like it's got but... like it's got some funkiness to it like i like i'm here for like the weirdo it takes on horror, I guess, is kind of the theme of my list a little bit, where it's sort of supernatural paranormal stuff, more so than just, like, straight-up slasher moments. Like, there's a little bit of uh, that energy, too, with the weird, like, deer guy with the axe and all that. Um, but yeah, I'm down for it. It's Resident Evil meets Remedy meets Alan Wake, and I think it's going to be really, really fun. It's probably the game that, in a way, I'm most looking forward to this year. I think there are other games that I might more naturally connect to, but Alan Wake 2 is the most interesting thing coming out for the rest of the year, in my opinion. Yeah, very excited for that game, which is unfortunate that I won't be able to play it now. Yeah. I'll uh, let you know also, the flashlight gunplay in Alan Wake 1, yeah, that stuff holds up. I played that game recently, too. I was I still surprised how good play... that felt. Yeah, really? first time player. Yeah, <laughs> I love I gotta, that. Maybe I gotta give it more of a chance, but it felt hey. very rough to me. It's the sound design that makes it for me. Remedy sound design is completely the unparalleled. great. The thing, the thing that, not to, like, I know we're trying to rush here a little bit. The thing that clicks with me is, like, people coming at you and that build up to, like, the flashlight and, like, getting a, a shot off at the last second. I, just, I love that mechanic. Feels so good. Very cool. Uh, Endless Dungeon, October 19th. A, a cool-looking roguelike. A roguelite? Roguelike? Who knows? Uh, there's simply no way of knowing. But I liked what I played. Uh, twin Stick. I played a uh, preview, and it's like a Twin Stick uh, roguelite. It's pretty cool. Gangs of Sherwood on October 19th, which I think is a multiplayer Robin Hood game. <laughs> Another one? I th Under are Hood Outlaws and Legends? I, I mean, Sherwood, right? Isn't that, uh, is that not For Robin sure Hood? you're right, but that's weird. Yeah. Uh, Hot, Wheels Unleash weird. <laughs> Hot Wheels Unleashed 2 Turbo Charged on October 19th. Uh, that first game was uh, surprisingly cool. People yeah. were into that one. Uh, here's a big one. We can't play this because we haven't shot. It, so. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. Uh, here, well, maybe a big one. I don't know for this crew. Uh, Marvel's Spider-Man Two on October twentieth. Bang. All right. Is it just me? I feel I, like we need more bullets. I'm saving my bullet. I but I am yeah. I I am excited for Spider-Man. Okay. Um. Yeah. yeah. Me too. Marvel Spider-Man Two. Excited to play it. Big title. We got more sequels. Not a lot of risk taken in this list for me, but you know, that's why I had to take WrestleQuest. Thank God. So we'll know I have some. Yeah, you have Viewfinder in WrestleQuest. I know, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but no, genuinely, Marvel Spider Man 2 seems cool. What's there to say? It's more Marvel Spider Man, which is a fantastic game. The movement's awesome. The flying wingsuit thing looks very fun. Um, yeah, I think. More Miles. Yeah, my hope for this, you know, we talk about it a lot on, yeah, I'm on a PlayStation podcast, so obviously we're always digging into Spider Man stuff. Um, is that they can meld, I think, some of the emotional weight that I felt in Spider-Man 1 with some of the streamlined and dynamic systems that you got from Spider-Man Miles Morales, and also the fact that Miles is there, which Miles is a really cool character. Um, so I'm hoping they can really blend those two things without maybe having, like, so many 
things happening in a way the story gets a little there's a lot of villains a lot of times so we'll see how all of that goes down but um i'm excited for it should be a lot of fun and quick shout out to i'm trophy hunting now in miles morales and genuinely it's such a simple game to pick up and you can just button mash your way through most encounters because it's a fairly straightforward game some of the nuance within the mechanics was a little bit lost in me in my initial playthrough and now really digging in and being forced to do some of those more specific takedowns has made me appreciate how much they have going on and how much they did with the abilities that they had so yeah excited for that one um i i just want to mention uh i'm I'm not banging this but i um i'm aiming at it uh world of horror is a game that comes out on october 19th which is just it, it's an indie uh maybe visual novel there's been like a demo out for a while that i haven't played it but it basically looks like a junji ito game in like the illustration Mm -hmm. style it is this like really cool really creepy looking game um it's coming out in october halloween month baby i always want to play uh you know a horror game around then and it's just like this is a game that's been posting screenshots for like a long time and every time i see a screenshot i'm like oh wow look at that nice what's it called again a uh, world of horror world of horror which is a great transition for what i believe will be another big one october bang. 20th so oh, super mario brothers wonder bang <laughs> that's right bang all right oh gosh okay it's a three-way uh, duel no. i guess it's not a duel at that <laughs> point i was so scared where you're going with that no um, i'm not gonna call it what you think i'm gonna call it janet um yeah let's hear it. uh, uh jacob why do you why do you care about mario <laughs> <laughs> I I love I love a little game where you can be guy and run around. Um I I really like I like the the weirder Mario gets the more I am in on it. You know, like I love I love the conceptual galaxy universes. I love the kind of like strange one-off levels in like Super Mario 3D World. Um, and this really looks like that, where it's going to be a game where they're just like trying a bunch of stuff for like one level. Um, and so I, you know, in this crowd, I, I think I may be not the most passionate about it, but like I am really looking forward to this game. Uh, Jeff, um, Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Yeah, I mean, I've been playing Mario games like my my age of Mario was really the Super Nintendo NES Super Nintendo era of original 2D um, Mario games. And Super Mario World was the first one that I really fell in love with Mario. My my brother and I, we back then we had to rent the actual console and the game at the same time. And we we rented it multiple times, hoping we'd get the same copy and that someone else from Mr. Movies didn't, you know, copy <laughs> over our save file and continuing it. And when we saw the reveal for Super Mario Wonder, um, that was like, that was my touchstone of like, I, I couldn't really understand, like, what's different about the art style that makes it, you know, look so much better than the new Super Mario Brothers, but it it kind of reawakened that kind of love and enthusiasm that I've had for Super Mario. I haven't played many of the new Super Mario Brother games. I'm I enjoy the 3D ones, but this is kind of my like my jam for old style. I don't I don't play a lot of other platformers either. It's just kind of this is my zoomed in kind of specialty of Mario games and it reminded me of when I was a little kid playing with my brother. Uh, back in the 90s. So if you guys, you know, want to destroy that nostalgia, I'll, I understand. It worked with Mara Wendy. He's trying it again, folks. Don't buy <laughs> well, it. Well, Jeff, I'm not the only one with nostalgia. I was also yeah. there in the 90s. I've been playing Mario games for about 24 years. Some quick math. Yeah, some 29. That started when I was five. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm a big fan of Mario. It's probably my most played, and in a sense, my most beloved franchise. I think seeing wonder really felt like a refreshing moment because to jacob's point it is dipping into that weirdness it is getting more creative um and again what's one thing that i always say my personal favorite aspect of game design is when level design allows you to recontextualize abilities and i think mario wonder is gonna have a fun mix of both of having really wonky level design but also having really out there abilities i mean the fact that mario is 
elephant man? Like, come on. Like, what is going on here? I want to know. I'm also a big fan of Yoshi. Yoshi's Island is one of my favorite games ever. Why do I bring this up? Because this is the full-on Yoshification of Mario. This is Touch Fuzzy, Get Dizzy the Game. I can't think of a game that's more me, and I do the multiplayer stuff all the time with my brother. That's right, Jeff, I'm not the only one with a brother on Oh, this you got a brother too? Yeah, there we go. One player, two player. We got it. We got it all. And I played a lot of um, Super Mario 3D World, also in that multiplayer realm. Um, I think as a multiplayer game, this is going to be a lot of fun. So yeah, ready to get back to it. I've been playing a bunch of Mario stuff for forever. This is also one of my most anticipated games of the year because uh, I love Mario. Yeah, I, I think we got to throw it to uh, to chat, right? Uh, I didn't shoot it because it's not 3D. Get out of here. 2D Mario. Don't waste my time. I'm just kidding. I'm very excited for this game. But I do prefer 3D like a weirdo. I'll always take 3D Mario over 2D Mario. Do you consider the movie 2D or 3D? It's, uh, oh, great question. <laughs> Thank uh, you. That is a good question. I did see it in 3D. Yeah, I was about to say, it depends on if oh. you're wearing 3D glasses or not. I mean, it is a, heck, yeah, I don't know, 2D, I guess, right? And you loved it. I watched, um, uh, what was the movie? Uh, there's this movie called Werewolves Within, which is based yeah. on the Ubisoft video game. I rewatched it the other night for fun, and it made me sort of realize that the like, yeah, as much as I love the Mario Brothers movie, I was like, God, this is such a better like, movie based <laughs> on a video game. It's it's, a, it's silly to compare them because they're so different. But uh, Werewolves Within, the best video game movie ever made. I'm saying it here on the podcast. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Uh, any uh any did you put a uh a, a vote in the chat, Janet? I wasn't sure how yeah, we, we were got asking that. Crowboy says me. Cat says me. Snake says me. Levi says me. When you say me, they're saying Janet. They're not <laughs> them writing. I get the yeah. game. <laughs> yeah, Starveed says Jeff um, just to make things interesting. So Crowboy says it's almost a tie, but I believe I mean, that's what is like... that? It feels like oh, someone gave it to Kyle also, just so that yeah, we're I'll, clear. I'll take sure. I'll take it. Uh, I think that's I think that's Janet, right? That's a Janet. Yeah. Yep. And now, to be fair, Janet is the one reading the results, so she could be skewing that this in any true. way she wants. But you know what? We're not gonna, we're not going to dig into it. We're just going to trust her. Uh, let's see. Okay, Cities Skylines two on October twenty fourth. A uh, cool city builder that uh, people seem to like. Uh, Metal Gear Solid colon Master Collection Volume 1, which is just a collection of the old games, but damn it, I'm really excited to play Metal Gear Solid on my Switch. Maybe it's dumb, but uh, I'm not going to shoot it, but uh, I'm excited for that one. You're going to crank it. That's right. Nice. I mean, yeah, that's how I do play, yeah. Uh, October 25th... and leave it there. <laughs> yeah, right? October 25th, Alone in the Dark, the remake, which I am actually curious about because... I've never played Alone in the Dark, and I know it's Legacy, and I know this is a remake, but uh, I'm curious about that one. Okay, now we're moving into November. Things are getting tight. We, uh, we hold do... on, Kyle. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bang oh, um, one that I missed? Mineko's Night Market, which came up earlier, um, and I felt bad because <laughs> I was holding back some bullets, but now I got more bullets, uh, and it came up again in I the don't... list for some reason. So Any Okay, that's a loophole. Yeah. Yep. yeah. That's normally it's that there. Be allowed. It's there. So you used your uh, Mario bullet on Mineko is what happened. Yeah, it is, you know. it's it's apparently it's a game about crafting crafts, eating eats and catting cats, according to uh, the website. So yeah. it looks I think I might adorable. be less excited about it after <laughs> hearing that description. You don't want to catch it really? enough. It's, it has such a cute art style. Um, it's all about like being in this night market and sort of gathering materials to sell and things. It sounds super interesting. The art is incredible. This is another one where I played it, and I, I'm i still going to check it out, for sure. I don't have any bullets left, so I can't shoot anything. Um, bullets? Yeah, but You killed I, Spider-Man, Alan Wake, and Mario. You yeah, shot all I, three of those characters. Yeah, I lined You're them all up. Good. One bullet You're just doing went fine. straight through this AAA <laughs> the day the gaming trio. died. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I wasn't a big fan of some of what they had going on with the demo that I played, personally. But they're going to have a lot of like mini games in the game, which I am a fan of. So I'm excited to check it out. And hopefully the whole thing comes together nicely. But I okay. can't, because Jeff was playing it. Yeah, that's right. Uh, quick check-in. Jacob has two bullets left. Jeff has two bullets left. I have one bullet left. Leo has one bullet left. Janet, out of bullets. About uh, how many games left are there? Um. Well, there is the undated 32. games, which... Like, there's quite a lot of those, which we're not going to go through those. 
Um, but in terms of like confirmed November, December games, there's like 10, something like that. Okay. All right, November. Star Ocean, the second story R, uh, November 2nd, which is a, a cool looking. Uh, what do we call that style now that Octopath kind of established? It kind of looks like that. Oh, um, HD, Pixel HD or something? Yeah, which I like. I still like it, and that game looks cool, but I'm not going to shoot it. Thirsty Suitors, November 2nd. Thirsty Suitors. What's that okay. one again? It's a it's really cool suitors game. Suitors who are parched. <laughs> yeah, it's a Annapurna published. I forget the developer offhand. Um, it is, it's a lot of things. So yeah, it looks like it's like 12 genres. It's it looks 12, cool. Yeah. yeah. So yeah I'm seeing skateboarding cooking RPG, Leo. Yeah. Okay. That, honestly, but also like a whistle. dating game. Kind of the, <laughs> it's a, it's a turn based combat dating game that has a lot of other elements. So that's where like the cooking, the skateboarding, all this other stuff comes in. But frankly, the more I talk about it with other people who have played it and are excited for it, which I'm excited for it, but I don't have any bullets. Um, it kind of has some Yakuza energy to it. And I'm not saying it's on par in terms of quality, but just like getting into a battle, having ridiculous, like animated cutscene level moves that you do, like you can inflict thirst on people and guilt and like all this funky, weird <laughs> stuff. Like, it kind of reminds me of that, because if you've played Yakuza, like, I, the only one I've played is, uh, like, a dragon. But there's so much stuff you can do, and I feel like you could very similarly throw in a lot of genres on that game. And Thirsty Suitors kind of evokes that chaotic energy with a really vibrant, neon almost art style to it. Um, it's kind of like an oversaturated art style. I think it looks cool. Um, it was fun so far. I could see the turn-based stuff maybe being a little dense with how much dialogue is in there sometimes but i enjoyed what i played i'm gonna gamble and bang that because it sounds so up my alley i wish i didn't <laughs> shoot exo primal so i had a little more to work oh, with here. I I about to really say, so I now know. are you sure you want to do this leo because there's <laughs> i haven't Look, checked what's what's left out of uh respect let him do it integrity. let all him right. bang yeah all right you did it that was your last bullet. You put on a blindfold and you fired aimlessly <laughs> at thirsty suitors. Hey, and you're thirsty suitors is best. cool. All right. No, no, it is. But uh, just Leo's uh, unfamiliarity. No, with I understand. Makes him, he's rolling the dice based on your recommendation here, Janet. Uh, November 3rd, WarioWare Move It. Bang. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, if I, that might have been my last bullet. I was considering it, but I, there's something else I want. I have the benefit of the list in front of me. Yeah. That look it looks like Warrior Wear Smooth Moves too. I love smooth moves on the Wii. Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh but Jacob, you're one it. You want to quickly tell us what's so exciting about it? I, yeah, it I mean truly it is because I love smooth moves so much. And uh maybe I'm missing something, but like I there hasn't really been a true smooth move successor, right? Like the other no. Wario games have kind of been doing other things and it's just like i i really want a a switch party game that's not mario kart or smash bros and those are kind of the two that i still have and this really seems like one that you know like people don't have to be good at video games to play and have a great time with yeah uh, a wario game where you stand up i'm excited for that uh, this game coming out November 9th, uh, the title is, uh, this is weird, but it's called Sorry Leo, Like a Dragon Gaiden, The Man Who Erased His Name? <laughs> uh, yeah, they decided right, their current naming convention wasn't confusing enough. <laughs> uh, I, I, maybe I'm, I'm incorrectly assuming that that's one you, you would have fired your weapon on had you known it was coming up. But I probably would have, but it's, it's, I'm happier missing that than I am missing uh, Like a Dragon 8 at this point. Cool. Uh, I'll yeah. bang that one. All right. Hell yeah. I'm sure we'll have Mahjong, and as long as I get that <laughs> far into the game, I'll just play Mahjong until I give up. So, yeah. Uh, Persona 5 Tactica on November 17th, which is probably a Persona 5 sequel, as, as everything does seem to be canon when it, when it comes to follow ups to Persona 5. Uh, uh, I will bang well, that one too, I guess, because right. I know what. I know what Kyle is keeping his last one for, and I don't want to fight you over that one, Kyle. Really? Yeah. Well, we, we'll get I, into it because everybody else. I I don't have a good I don't have a good argument for why I should get it over you. So, uh, <laughs> and I like tactics games, so maybe maybe that one will work out. I wonder if you if we're on the same page here. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know? Well, I hope so. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> November 17th, Kyle pulls his gun out of his holster. Yeah, Super Mario right. RPG. Bang. Any other Super Mario RPG super fans on this panel? Just me, no, and uh, that was the problem. So was that what that was the one that you <laughs> that would have been the one? Yes, but um, well, Jeff, um, thank you for jumping in front of the Persona Five Tactica gun. <laughs> I guess so I could play Super Mario RPG. My first, not my first turn-based RPG, but the first turn-based RPG that made me understand why turn-based RPGs were cool is the first turn-based RPG I saw to credits. Very nostalgic for me. Have I actually? played some of it recently like in the last two or three months to capture some footage for a video i did at game informer i pulled it up on the wii u and played the first like 30 minutes or something like that and i was like ah oh. i i was tempted to like just sit down and play the rest of it so when they announced a remake i was just like thank you guys for making this for me i really appreciate it i uh, thanks for thinking of me specifically so <laughs> super mario rpg okay so i have two games for december and then there is a big list of games that do not have dates which, you know, Jacob, you have... Jacob, no, you Kyle, why don't you pool? read off those two games for December? So we got December, we got Dragon Quest Monsters the Dark Prince on December 1st. And then we have Avatar Frontiers of Pandora on December 7th. Bang! Wow, okay! <laughs> uh, last game on the list. That's, honestly, I'm not even like, I don't think you're making a mistake, but I am surprised. I didn't think you were like a, an Avatar person. I thought you were just a I, human person. No, I am. I am an avatar person. <laughs> I am eight feet person. tall. Um, <laughs> I, you know, it is like, are, are there other games that I did not get that I'm more excited about on this list? Sure. But like, I think this game looks really surprisingly good. Uh, like, right. I, it's just like the idea of it being in first person i think is actually like a really cool choice to see like avatar limbs animating in front of you kind of i mean this is basically it's basically far cry on pandora yeah. that seems to be the pitch of this and it's like that sounds great to me because like i think the the far cry games have kind of gotten less interesting as their uh locales of choice have gotten worse you know, it's like I didn't really care about Montana and the the political dumpster fire that was uh, Cuba kind of scared me off of that one. But it's like this. It just it just seems like it'll be really fun and getting to do just like, you know, riding riding the banshees and uh, going on those floating mountains and stuff. Seems like a great time. I'm excited yeah. to be that much bigger than humans. That's going to be a unique first person experience. Oh, you should play Alien Isolation. But then then you're small, no. right? No, you are. But I think the thing about that game is it actually re more realistically than most games puts your head height higher. It's it's a little off putting, but it works for an alien <laughs> game. Uh, well, yeah, that's uh, that you surprised me, Jacob, but I am I'm interested in that game, too. I think that game looks cool. OK, I'm going to before we move on to ads and questions etc i'm going to run down everyone's list here uh jacob uh these uh, and a reminder you you have to play these six games and none of the rest of us get to play these six games uh, for the rest of the year which is a bummer but it is what it is uh jacob won immortals of avium armored core six fires of rubicon goodbye volcano high lies of p warrior where move it and of course avatar frontiers of pandora janet has oxen free 2 viewfinder wrestle quest alan wake 2 Marvel's Spider-Man 2 and Super Mario Brothers Wonder. You have three twos in there. <laughs> yeah. Uh Jeff, um, you have Atlas Fallen. Uh number two, Starfield, Super Bomberman R2, which might be the biggest surprise of this whole thing. Oh, okay. Uh Mineko's Night Market, Like a Dragon Guide in the Man Who Erased His Name, and Persona 5 Tactica. I Kyle have Pikmin 4, Disney Illusion Island, Sea of Stars, Eternites, Cocoon, and my beloved Super Mario RPG. Leo, Exo Primal, Bomb Rush, Cyber Funk, Fay Farm, Payday 3, Assassin's Creed Mirage, and Thirsty Suitors. I'm satisfied. Yeah. I, I feel did. good about my list. Except for maybe Illusion Island. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> That's there we go. That's it. We we completed what was the name? The 2023 release calendar <laughs> six shooter duel. We did it. Congratulations, everybody. But more importantly, Jacob, uh, how does this whole thing operate? Do you have any idea? 
Uh, well, we buy all our bullets using the money that we get from Patreon. That's not right, but yeah, we have a <laughs> Patreon, uh, MinMax, uh, excuse me, patreon.com slash MinMax, two ends. Go over there, check out the tiers if you want to support us. And this week we are supported by HelloFresh. Uh, with HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and season seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Uh, you can get pre-portioned ingredients to help cut down on food waste while step-by-step instructions make cooking a breeze, not a chore. HelloFresh gets you what you want. Uh, look, hold on. Let me start the number. HelloFresh gets that you want options when it comes to what you make for dinner, not just the same old thing all the time. That's why they offer 40 recipes to choose from every single week. So you'll never get bored and can always find something new to try and love. Unsubscribe from Gruel Box. Try HelloFresh. <laughs> Why did you sign up for Gruel Box, Leo? I'm assuming you're the, the same one. meal the every day, day sounded trial, appealingly gotta... simple. The, the but actually, now they have my credit card and they won't give it back. The text, <laughs> the text from HelloFresh did request that we not badmouth other, uh, you know, competitors. So no sorry. shade on Gruel Box. <laughs> sorry, Gruel Box. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I actually, so I, I don't get the the samples like Ben does. Ben gets to try these things directly, but I was a HelloFresh subscriber at one time in my life. And the thing that it really helped me with uh, beyond having uh, good meals was just learning how to cook. It really helped me learn how to cook in a big way. And I, and I cook a lot more now because I was subscribed to HelloFresh for a period of time. So I'm, I'm always grateful for that. Thank you, HelloFresh. Uh, please go to HelloFresh.com slash MinMax50 and use the code MinMax50, M-I-N-N-M-A-X-5-0, uh, all one word for 50% off, plus free shipping. So shout out to HelloFresh. We are also sponsored by I Am 8-Bit. Uh, as I Am 8-Bit has supported us, you know, since since basically uh, the beginning. Uh, so we're always grateful for I Am 8-Bit. They do awesome stuff. Go check out their website. Uh, they're currently taking pre-orders on the vinyl soundtrack, it's a vinyl soundtrack and art prints for Bug Snacks, uh, which is a very good video game. I think I said this last week as well, but I, last time I checked with her, my daughter said it was her favorite game of all time. And I believe that is cool. still the case, unless it's changed since last week. I'm not sure. Uh, so it's a two record collection on orange cream vinyl with album art from Nicole Gustafson, Gustafson and music from Seth Parker. And it, it has the It's Bug Snacks track from Carol Carol Bonita on there. So that's I mean, that's that's all you're going to be listening to. So it's important to note that it's a great song. It will get stuck in your brain. There are also limited edition art prints on textured cotton rag paper available. And, of course, uh, as we go through these questions coming up, we will select a question of the week as we do every week, and I Am 8-Bit will send that person a prize in the mail. And the I Am 8-Bit promotional code for July, which gets you 10% off anything under $100, is, this is all one word, egg on a sidewalk. Which, when I first read that, I... I, I've been I've been rewatching Ghostbusters recently randomly, so I, I read it as Egon a sidewalk, uh, which I was like that can't be right. That's not how you spell Egon, but egg on a sidewalk. That's the code for I Made Bit for the month of July for Min Max. Ten percent off of everything under a hundred dollars. Okay, you guys ready for questions? You guys ready to do this? Ready. Yeah. yeah. And please remember, try to help me remember the question of the week. Um, so we can send that person a prize. Starting off here from Mike Lynch, which game announcement felt the best? As in the amount, the announcement was so good it elevated your soul. Uh, you can choose this list. You can choose from a list they've given us or nominate your own: The Last Guardian, Metroid Four, Street Fighter Four, Shenmue Three, Sora and Smash Brothers, God of War, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Some some options there. But you guys have a game announcement that felt the best. That made you feel good. Uh, the The Last Guardian <laughs> was honestly uh, what I thought of, but that was a game that I knew was coming out. I, actually, even though I have mixed feelings about it, seeing that Shadow of the Colossus remake trailer come up on screen, I was truly uh, like uh, shocked and got chills because I just didn't expect it. And when I realized like what they were showing, I was uh, very very excited. That was. Jacob, I can't believe that was also mine, specifically the remake. 
Well, and here's the thing, Kyle. We have very similar tastes in Team Eco games. That's true. I mean, I love Shadow of the Colossus. And also, I think the thing that made it so fun at the time was I don't think there was even a leak or a rumor. Like, it wasn't even something people had sort of considered even for fun. Of Like, oh, what if they remade Shadow of the Colossus? And so when it was, like, clear what it was and you saw these high, you know, like, resolution Colossuses in the trailer, I was just like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe they're doing this. It was such a huge surprise. It, it made me so excited. So, yeah, totally on the same page with you there. And nothing else has ever made us feel good. The rest of us are joyless. No. That's yeah. Right. yeah. Honestly, no, that's the, the last thing that I popped for, like, in a really big way, <laughs> was, it's, like, not even a game announcement. It's, like, a a port of an emulator. When, it, when they had six golden coins on the NSO oh, yeah, um, yeah. collection, like, the Nintendo Switch online collection, just because I love that game a lot. And there's something, obviously, like, what's more, I think, exciting is when they announce a game that you, like, that's new that you haven't heard of like wonder i did pop for that but that one i popped for because it has when it's like a remake or a port there's the unique aspect or maybe just a franchise you know really well there's a unique aspect of you know it like almost instantaneously like before everybody else and you just start like shout you know if you, i do like the live reacts a lot so i'm like oh is this that i'm like yeah great like and i was just really excited because it's genuinely one of my favorite games and i feel like i only get to talk about it when i randomly insert it into conversations so just getting more people to play that was really exciting to me. And you, wait, six golden coins, right? Is what you're yeah. talking about? Was mm-hmm. that, that was git, like my first Mario. Like that was cool. my brother got a Game Boy and six what gold a, coins. What a so weirdo that, introduction. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that one's very special to me. Um, like I said earlier, I'm not, I'm honestly not the biggest 2D Mario fan. I've enjoyed plenty of them, but six golden coins in particular, like that's a game that's very special. to me. So it's funny that you bring that up specifically. Okay, let's see. Matthew Byerwalter asks, my question is, has anyone ever immediately fallen in love with a franchise long after it came out? I played Pikmin 1 in the Pikmin 4 demo, and I am hooked. Love the way it plays, how cute the Pikmin are, and I can't believe I've gone this long without playing before now. I after pl- after seeing the Alan Wake 2 demo at Summer Game Fest, I was like, wait a minute, Remedy's awesome. Why haven't I ever finished one of their games? And I went back to play Control, and I'm having an awesome time playing that. I was immediately like, oh, wait wow. a minute, I, I love this completely. How have I not noticed this? I so vibe with the, the atmospheric horror stuff they're doing. And yeah, I'm having a great time with that. And it was, it was cool starting it up like, of course, this is a beautiful thing. I appreciate it now more than ever. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, I was pretty late to Metal Gear. Um, two was out by the time I played one. I saw a friend playing two. He was on the tanker, you know, the introduction, just sort of exploring, right? It wasn't even like the story that got me hooked or anything. It was just like, what is this? This looks crazy. You can hold people up and like take their dog tags and like the way people react to you. And that prompted me to go track down a PlayStation one and go play Metal Gear Solid uh, for the first time. And I it was all in pretty much immediately. I was like, this is amazing. Um, on on my uh, other podcast, something rotten. Plug plug plug. Uh, we are currently doing a, a Suda Fifty One season, um, and uh, Blake Hester and I are both playing Killer Seven for the first time, and we're both just like, "Oh my god, this game is so good!" You know, it's like we had we had Serial on uh, the for you know the first one, and Serial said for a long time, "It's like that might be his favorite game of all time," and it's very cool playing that in twenty twenty three and just being like, "I can see it." Like, this is not an unreasonable choice. I need to revisit that game. I played it right when it came out. I think it was like, I don't remember what came out near it, but I, I was like, I could not do the on rails thing. I was like, I just don't get this. Like, I don't, it, I, you know, but I need to, I need to give it another shot. I found playing it on PC with mouse aiming helps a lot. Uh, just because the demands of the aiming system with like a GameCube controller are so demanding. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's one of those that, that I like kind of uh, I did not give a fair shake at, when it came out. So I need to revisit that one. Uh, Henry Chandler. Hey there, Minnesota Maximum. Is it more fun to drive cars in games or drive cars in the real world? I think I can say confidently the real world because I took so long to start driving. I only got my license a couple years ago and driving in games was always boring to me and then i was really surprised to learn when i drove in real life of like oh i enjoy the simple pleasure of driving 
Wow. It's, I had like the exact opposite reaction. I find driving in real life so boring. <laughs> Maybe I've done it too much in my life at this point, but like, yeah, Maybe in video games, novelty. Leo, you can just like drive off the road and go as fast as you want and like go off a ramp and like. Yeah, but what about in video games? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you haven't exactly. seen me drive. That's true. That's a good point. Uh, I, yeah, no, I, it's it's video games like with a with a bullet for me. Uh, one of my bullets that I bullets. used to. to <laughs> that's right. So I just <laughs> yeah. threw my empty gun. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know how everybody else feels. It's it's fun when you're driving fast and it doesn't even have to be like race car fast. But if you're if you're driving to the point where you can actually kind of feel it, you know, when you're going around turns and stuff, that's something you don't uh, always feel in video games. I suppose if you did in VR, maybe feels a little better. Um, I had the realization a little while ago that I have literally never driven a like powerful car in real life. You know, it's like I learned to drive on a Subaru Forester. My current car is a, you know, 2009 Honda Fit. Like I, if I've driven friends cars, they've been kind of similar. And so it's like I I think that there is a a whole world of real driving that I like cannot even imagine because I don't know what the appeal is. Like, I don't know how it feels to like put your foot down and have the car go forward quickly. That's never been an experience <laughs> that I've had. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> I oh, do have a funny. couple absolute speed freaks in my life who are like got the police scanner and everything. So they know where they can hit oh, 120. Really? And yeah, it's uh, I also haven't experienced it, so I can't fully judge it. Uh, yeah, no, I'm surprised. I really thought it was definitely video games. So I'm surprised uh, that I'm pretty heavily outvoted here. You know what game is great driving is the Saints Row remake, but y'all aren't ready for that conversation. Well, you mean you're the right? Re- I'm not. It's not a remake, <laughs> right? If we're being... yeah, it's a reboot. Reboot. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Try and catch me on a technicality. Avoid the main <laughs> conversation. <laughs> now I'm excited to um, maybe drive then Leo because I still don't have my license yet, and I've never really driven like. Truly oh, LA, a I wouldn't B. drive in for a million dollars. See, everyone, okay, here's the thing. And we talked about this when you all came to visit, because you're all like, oh, it's the hellscape to learn how to drive in. And it is, but, like, I've always had hellscapes, because I only live in driving hellscapes. Like, I live in Chicago, SF, here. Like, the best place I lived in terms of driving would be, like, Iowa, I guess. But I live here, so, like, I gotta, if I'm going to learn to drive, I have to learn to drive in the hellscape that I have, would have to drive in. So, I don't know. But maybe it'll be fun going to the grocery store one block away. <laughs> Leo and I drove. Time. Leo and I drove aimlessly around Los Angeles once. I think we we're on the Star Wars trip, and we were just like, "What should we do? We have a car rented." And we're like, "I don't know. Let's just drive around Los Angeles for an hour." <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. Good memories? The, the question melt. mark. <laughs> I remember passing the melt. Right, I and mean, I think you tried to find a, you tried to find a TikToker's house, <laughs> uh, right? The Paul guy, Logan Paul. You're like, I think Logan Paul lives around here. <laughs> I don't okay. remember that. Maybe Leo. I knew where he lived at that time. Yeah, your <laughs> number one super fan, uh, Leo Vader. Wow. Jerry Young asks, "Hi, Min Max. Curious uh, if you have ever had a game prevent you from getting to other games." I've had Final Fantasy 16 installed and ready to go since launch, but every time I sit down to start it, I find myself doing just one more run of Rogue Legacy 2. That game's loop is just so good. Any similar experiences for you? Thanks. I mean, my whole dang life. I know. Every yeah. time every yeah. time I'm excited about like a, a current game, like T- Tears of the Kingdom is probably the best, most recent example where like, on the off on the like a couple of occasions where I was in the middle of Tears of the Kingdom and I went and played something too, I was or played something different. I was just like, like, what am I doing? I just need to go back to Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> I'm wasting my time with this other, you know, reasonably critically acclaimed game, but it's not Tears of the Kingdom. I'm sorry, other game. Yeah, always easy to go back to a, a comfort title. I will say I don't personally get stuck in like like a multiplayer game or like a loop like a rogue like you know where i'm like i just have to play one more match or i have to do one more attempt on that i i kind of it's it'll be like single player story games that will prevent me from trying other games but that's yeah. just i guess it's just kind of the you know the type of games i play in general well i mean it's like it's the reason that i don't play a lot of multiplayer or like really 
you know, time consuming roguelikes is like, I feel like I cannot afford to spend that much time in like, it's like there reaches a point where I'm not getting anything new out of it. And I am just quote unquote playing it because I enjoy it. And like for my job, I kind of can't do that. You know, it's like I it's I consider it important for myself to like be kind of continually getting new experiences because like the 300th hour of Rogue Legacy 2 isn't going to give me something that the first 200 didn't. Right. I feel a lot of empathy, sympathy with that. And I also have made the decision to just be bad at my job. (laughs) (laughs) Tell me more. (laughs) Just just playing Saints Row remake more than Tears of the Kingdom because I felt like it. Reboot, Leo. Count the reboot. I literally was in my head like, okay, make sure to say the right one this time. (laughs) See, I thought you were in your head like, I'm going to say the wrong one out of spite, you know? No. Uh, But that's what makes you good at your other job, which is being you. Like, that's your (laughs) thing. You know what I mean? Like, when I think Leo Vader, I think Immersive Sim, I think Hitman, I think live service game that's about to die, or I think funerals. Like, this is all (laughs) Leo Vader's thoughts. That's true. Thank you. Uh, Tom Blackbird, this maybe is just a question for Jeff and I, or maybe just me. I don't know, Jeff, if you're here yet, but uh, Tom Blackburn says, how do you want to introduce video games to your kid? Uh, same question for Jeff uh, and Kyle and Sarah, but for Poggers. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, are you there yet, Jeff? I'm not quite probably, right? No, not yet. Um, and I'm I'm in the camp of. Uh, if he's interested then we can play games together, but I'm not, I'm, I'm not, you know, like no, yeah, going to yeah. force him to be interested in my hobbies. I'm sure he'll, I'm, I mean, he's already seen me playing games. He hasn't been interested in them yet or really understood. He just wants his cartoons back on the television when I'm, when I'm playing. But, um, right. Yeah. I think he'll, you know, if, if he's interested, we'll start with, you know, probably a Nintendo game of some sort that's, you know, family friendly and, and kind of built with with a smaller consumer in mind of of making it a fun experience for them that you can kind of guide them through. Yeah, I mean, my approach was always like, I'll play something, and if if she's interested and wants to grab the controller, absolutely, by all means. But nothing will make a kid less interested in something than you going to them and saying like, hey, you should check this out. Like, mm-hmm. like just, I, it's so funny. It's, I get into quote unquote like fights with my kid all the time because I'm like, she'd be like, hey, I saw this uh, guy on YouTube. He's playing this game. I, I want to try it. Can you get that for me? And I'm like, I told you about that game six months ago. <laughs> what, I, 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 my recommendation isn't enough, but this random YouTuber does it. So, but hey, kids, right? You're Everybody, right, channel. Jeff? Um, <laughs> Yeah. No, but you definitely want to let kids just find stuff on their own for sure. Like develop their own tastes. You know what I mean? Like don't don't direct any of that stuff. It's way more exciting. I love seeing my kid have her very distinct taste in video games from mine. Uh, it I, I I love the conversations that we have where she sees what I'm playing and she's like, "This looks freaking terrible. What is this garbage that you're playing?" What is the last game that she what said kind about? Of language? If you're willing uh, to inadvertently gosh, put her on oh, blast in the show, P- Pikmin was one where she was oh. like. She was like, oh, this is cute. And then it was like, she was watching me play for like five minutes. And she was like, wait, you kill these So creatures? she's you from a few years ago. Yeah. Did, kind, you, well, did you tell her what she's going to grow into? Her, Have you warned her? Her, <laughs> her disinterest Someday was much, was, was yeah. much uh, more like animal friendly, where she was like, sure. this is a video game about murdering animals and carrying their corpses wait, wait, to wait. like uh, a drop off point to collect energy. And she's like, and you think this is fun? <laughs> Quick, I'm not going to get all the way into it, even though the game's been out for a long time. Bug snack, spoiler warning. I'm not going to get into right. it, but I do want to. I'm going to elude, so watch out. But her favorite game is Bug Snacks, correct? Yeah, and she loves how crazy it gets. How, yeah. Okay, because, like, was it. I, God, we need to get her on the pod. I know we can't because she's a child. But, like, <laughs> spoiler I have cast, so many snacks, questions yeah. to ask her about that because that is, you know. That's interesting. But who, you know, we're all made of contradictions, so I understand. Can you, like, lay her off or something so Hanson has to interview her? (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sorry, no more more unloading the dishwasher. Sorry, that job's no longer available for you. 
Uh, yeah, I'm leaving the Hilliard family. <laughs> Exit interview. Yeah. What's next it, for you? But it was truly it, Pikmin in particular. It was it was a funny moment where she's like, "This looks cute. You have a dog. You're throwing these little cute mm-hmm. creatures." But then it was like once she understood what the core mechanic was, which is carrying corpses to places after yeah, you kill them. Big. She was there's like, a, "Nope." There's a lot of that. I'm out. I'm good. Thank you. I'm gonna go play another million hours of uh, Stardew Valley. Thank you very much. Okay, let's see. Star Killer says, "Hey, Min Maxers, which game do you think had a bigger spectacle budget, God of War Ragnarok or Final Fantasy 16?" Uh, Jacob, I would love your insight on this. I love this question. I gave yeah. it a big old thumbs up. Um, I've been thinking about this a lot. Um, I, I, with the disclaimer that I don't know how budgets work, um, I do feel like. God of War has what what the the strange thing about Final Fantasy and I feel like maybe very broadly you could say about like Japanese versus American games working in this like triple A space is that like God of War doesn't have any of the uh cheap moments you know, it's like Final Fantasy has kind of the like incredible budget things. And then immediately after that, you will be in a conversation that's just like static to cameras. Right. The characters barely animating. And it's like Final Fantasy 16 is not really an open world game. It's like as much so as God of War or maybe less. And so like I if if the games cost the same amount, I would say that. Final Fantasy 16 had a bigger spectacle budget just because the lack of budget is more obvious in other places. Like it's it ha- kind of has more highs and lows, whereas God of War is just like so supremely polished throughout. Um, I there are things in Final Fantasy 16 that I truly feel like I haven't seen since like God of War three. You know, that is kind of my like spectacle mm analog and i really don't think the modern god of wars have like approached the level of scale that they used to um and i, I, agree uh, with and that, I really especially like that. using three as an example i would i would totally agree with that yeah so uh, i you know with with zero knowledge i would say uh god of war cost more overall but final fantasy 16 spent more of its budget on those big moments yeah, there's a lot more giant creatures, surprisingly, I think, in, in Final Fantasy, ultimately. There's oh, yeah. There's a lot of big creatures in God of War, but they're even bigger in Final Fantasy. <laughs> right? Is that fair? Okay, let's see. Uh, Root Function says, Hello, cohorts. I'd like to get your thoughts on the Microsoft versus FTC case over the Activision Blizzard deal. Uh, what do you think the outcome will be? What do you think the long-term consequences will be if the acquisition does or doesn't go through? Of course, the situation is still ongoing. Uh, let's see if the merger proceeds in all of the jurisdictions. I'd be curious to see how things are handled in the UK. I mean, I sorry, root function. I, I certainly don't have any insider predictions about how it will affect things in the UK. But yeah, I. It's honestly, personally, just something I'm not really tracking very closely, just because it's like, I, I'm, I. It's like until there's like a definitive answer, I think is when I will s- start sort of looking at it more closely. But right now, it's just a lot of discussion. Uh, with judges who don't really have a lot of uh, insight into the video game industry and seem very confused by the whole process. Yeah, bingo. Uh, it's it's really it's it's one of those situations where it's like it. I almost don't. It it makes me uncomfortable to kind of like watch it even because it's like a very important quote unquote very important decision is going to be made by people who don't understand the technology or the industry, and it's like. They're just going to have to listen to two sides who both, you know, have their interests in it and try and figure out, you know, like what the actual case is or, you know, like how it how it affects the larger ecosystem in terms of actually affecting the ecosystem. Like. This merger doesn't doesn't seem as important to me as as like the Bethesda one did, you know, it's, but I like, I understand that call of duty makes a ton of money and it's, it's, that's just more my personal disinterest in, in like call of duty and overwatch. Like it, it doesn't feel like it has the massive impact and certainly not in the like 
oh, if this goes through, Sony's done, and you know we're not going to be able to sell PlayStation sixes because of this. It, it's like they they have their reason for you know trying to block it, but it doesn't. It, it also feels like like the entire argument against it is is like this is you know anti competition or or unfair competition. It's like you're arguing that about the company that's inarguably in last place, right? Like, like, it, I mean, it, it feels like Microsoft is a third or fourth in terms of console importance or like larger ecosystem importance. If, if you're going to go out and buy a console, it's, it's probably not going to be Xbox. That's something that's come out from the case is them like acknowledging they're deeply in last place. Yeah. Well, I, I acknowledging or, strategically positioning themselves. I mean, it's like in in the console war perspective, I think Xboxes are selling less, but we're talking about the company Microsoft. Like, (laughs) you know, I... I guess I my answer is less to do. I I agree with you, Jeff. I'm on the kind of like I don't think that like games are going to. It's like I don't think Call of Duty is going to be meaningfully different in two years, depending on what happens here. But like, I think it's pretty indisputably bad for the in like consolidation is not good on this scale. Like sure. I, I it's it's bad that one company would. You know, that that Microsoft, which is one of the largest tech companies in the world, would purchase one of the largest video game publishing studios in the world just because I do not want the entire industry owned by one company. You know, Mm -hmm. like that's that's the bad part. And I I think for for people, you know, and, and this is. It's a nuanced issue, and obviously everyone is buying things up. And I don't say this to be like Sony's the good guys because they're all like they're all scum companies. Like I like video games. I don't yeah, think absolutely. that yeah. I don't want to like root for any of it, these people, but like, it's one of the reasons I, the console wars on a, like a sort of uh, just community level of discussion always drives me crazy. It's like, don't we're, we don't need to back these like giant yeah. conglomerates. Like just enjoy the products they make. You don't have to defend them, but please. Yeah. Please you know, them. it's, it's just like, I, I think the, I, I can't see a world where the industry is in a healthier place because there are like fewer uh, companies you know and and especially like a merger of this size just seems like bad it it seems that microsoft is gathering up every game studio and then they will you know game pass will be non-optional and then they'll hike the price of game pass like that's look at streaming you know this is this is just kind of what happens yeah, I I didn't want to come off as, as me being pro Microsoft or acquisition either, and I don't I don't necessarily think the Bethesda acquisition was a good thing to begin with. It's it's just it feels weird that this is the one that that people are like, oh wait, hold hold the phone. This one is the game changer. But like I right. said, some of that some of that on a personal level is I feel I feel so disinterested in what Activision and Blizzard have been making. You know for the past five years or whatever, that it doesn't have a big, big impact on me. Yeah, there's already five companies that make all movies and theaters. Like, it feels like the ship has sailed to start caring, but it definitely does matter. Yeah. So we'll see. We're rooting for nobody. (laughs) (laughs) Whoever wins, we lose. They should start a Patreon, Activision Blizzard. That's right. (laughs) There you go, yeah. Uh, yeah, Leo, you make that point. I, yeah, it's funny. I don't know if there's like, is there like a frequent Activision like game or franchise that like I have to like Call of Duty? I I check in on the campaigns like every two or three years at this point. But I don't know if there's any like unless I'm just forgetting one. I, I can't think of any huge Activision games that I'd be like excited to suddenly see appear on Game Pass. But eh, I'm just I'm sure I'm just forgetting something obvious. Uh, Zane Thorpe says, "Hey, uh, Hanson and the gang. Uh, Hanson's not here today. Is there no one on the show that likes Star Trek? Star Trek Resurgence just came out, and it's the best Star Trek game in years. Granted, that's not saying a lot, but there you go. So, are any of you guys science fiction fans besides Star? Are you guys science fiction fans besides Star Wars? Thanks for reading. Um." Yeah, yeah but any, not Star Trek. I mean, I'm yeah, sci-fi fans aside from Star Wars, but 
not including Star Trek. Yeah. yeah. I, I like, I like the original Star Trek. Yeah. I, that was, um, um, I, I have lapsed heavily, but there was a time in my life when Star Trek, the next generation was like, if I missed the episode that week, like it was the end of the world. Like that, you know, nothing. And you threw a tantrum. I threw a tantrum. It was, it was truly terrible because it's not like I could rewatch it anywhere else. You know, like I had to watch Star Trek, the next generation. I uh, love the Star Trek uh, The Next Generation video game on Super Nintendo, which is a bad game, but my brother and I really got into it. And then uh, recently, I've been listening to Blank Check uh, cover. They they do commentaries on movie franchises, and they watched all the original Shatner Star Trek movies. And I sort of rewatched those with their commentaries, and it was like a nice nostalgic trip because I used to like love those movies. I would like to go to Blockbuster and rent a movie was basically being like which star trek movie am i gonna rent tonight you know <laughs> is it am i gonna get wrath of khan or am i gonna get undiscovered country i wouldn't even look at the other movies but uh yeah I, those, I, since next generation went off the air i've really fallen off yeah those original movies were great at putting me to sleep like <laughs> i i don't know if i've ever finished a single because eventually like 45 minutes into each movie there's like a nine minute unveiling of the enterprise like it's the first time you've ever seen it and it's like but look at the enterprise and it's just slowly drifting through space and i zonk out every time the motion picture is genuinely embarrassing for that i think like honest (laughs) to god i think it's it might be three to five minutes like of if you can can you imagine that in a modern movie if they spent three to five minutes looking at a vehicle it's like what are we doing here (laughs) this is insane I watched uh, yeah. Star Trek 2.0 when they aired that on G4. They took old Star Trek episodes and made them small in the middle of the screen. And on the sides, you had like fun facts about the actors or whatever. And on the other side, you had like live tweets about it. Star Trek 2.0 on G4. <laughs> Loved oh, watching that yeah. with my dad. But then the rest of my life, I feel like I've been waiting for the right Star Trek thing. And it never really clicked. The 2009 movie is probably my favorite Star Trek thing. I do like that movie. Yeah. Uh, Janet, nothing. Don't care about Star Trek at all. Not even. No, a not really. I mean, I I've heard really good things, and it's been recommended to me a lot. But there's just like it's, it's there's so much there, and I have such a long list of so many other things. It's like, am I gonna even get to this before I die? Uh, I would say no, but you know, there's always a possibility. It would it would be hard to become a Star Trek fan like suddenly today <laughs> right? Like, yeah. Uh, but yeah I, i've been thinking of maybe going back and rewatching next generation just for like nostalgia you know i i think i would get a kick out of that just uh just remembering those episodes um in with... the live chat says uh get to it after you die that's some you know that's a good point oh, yeah. like there you go. in case yeah. there is an afterlife that's kind of the same as here but like i don't know misty looking i don't, I don't really know how many depictions of the afterlife there have been yeah, that's yeah. something I can save it for, you know? Yeah, have something... you probably have access to Paramount Plus there. You could probably still... <laughs> Depends on where I am, I guess. Wouldn't, yeah, it wouldn't be heaven. <laughs> it might all, it might wait, be you have Paramount Peacock. Plus? Oh no, where are we? <laughs> <laughs> what did I do? Uh, we got two sandwich questions here. One from Sly Cut, one from Malcolm yeah. Holiday. Uh, please describe in great detail your perfect sandwich. And... Uh, piggybacking on that uh are y'all hot or cold sandwich people toasted or non-toasted bread so what yeah what are some perfect sandwiches from folks and don't say hot dog get out of here with that Leo. Uh, hot hot roast beef provolone peppers all in a pan together cooked together getting messed up in each other's juices <laughs> put on was... some toasted bread <laughs> with some with some mayo or whatever hell yeah toasted bread I roast beef actually. I'm I'm with you there. Well, a, a a good roast beef sandwich. That that'll take me a long way. I think I think that far more sandwiches should have fig jam on them. I think fig jam is almost always like a net improvement to a sandwich. So I kind of I'm not even sure what the proteins would be, but like hearing like fig jam and brie on any sandwich will just get me excited. I'll be like, like I don't care what the rest of it is. Grilled chicken. Yeah, or you know, yeah. turkey, any kind of any kind of meat um but also um i man i love a pastrami sandwich i'm a, I'm a jewish man what can i say i have to love a pastrami sandwich <laughs> pastrami's good i'll go any kind of italian hero is my hero <laughs> that's all i got <laughs> um i was frantically trying to look up just the menu for ike's sandwiches which is like a 
That place is so good. It's so good. I had them when I went to the West Coast. Yeah, is it just in the West Coast? I I think so. Yeah, they might be branching out, but they're not in the East yet. Yeah, so it's a regional-ish chain. Like, I don't know how many locations they have. They have a couple in LA, some in SF, and, you know, I don't know if anyone in chat knows they can lob it my way. But I first had Ike's when I was at, like, the Kind of Funny studio because they ordered lunch. They were getting food from Mike's, and then I got a sandwich. Didn't think much of it at the time because, frankly, like... I think so much was, you know, I'm like traveling, like I wasn't in a big appetite mood. I had like uh, one of their halal chicken sandwiches. I was like, yeah, it was cool. Then I ordered from them again and like my mind was blown. They have like a (laughs) kajillion sandwiches and they're all so delicious. So for me, I look for multiple meats and then again, I'm I'm big on a sauce. So like the McCain's pretty good because it has like their specialty sauce, and like turkey and like provolone, like I like a lot of meats and a lot of cheeses, and I tend to go cold, I would say. If I can get something toasted, I'll, like, toast it, but I don't need it as a requirement. But, yeah, the, any of their, like, more deli meat-based sandwiches is where I tend to gravitate towards. Hell, yeah. Uh, Googling Ike's, they have something called Dirty Sauce and yeah. Vegan Dirty Sauce. I was going to read that, but then I'm like, then I'm going to have to, like, open up the can of worms that I don't know how to answer. <laughs> like, I don't know what's in the Dirty Sauce, but sauce it up. Like sauce double it the sauce. It's so good. And then you can put like a kajillion things on there too. Like if you're ever in an area that has Ike's, which again, I think is just California spots. Yeah, hit up Ike's. See. It, it looks like the closest to us is 695 miles away in Denver, Colorado. Okay. So, so it's got a couple other spots. Uh, but yeah, if plus. you can, if some you in can Texas. get some Ike's, it's really good. It's probably, it's probably the best sandwich I've had here. They have that so like, far. What, what like the Dutch bread? It's like it's like the the crust is almost like sugary. It's so good. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, shout out to peanut butter and jelly. Sometimes that just really hits the spot. <laughs> what is this, what the, the drop off of this conversation from like? Yeah. What? Get, Look, get, out, not, get that out of here. What I'm you, not what saying you, it's my favorite. Old? I'm not saying it's my favorite. I'm just saying like sometimes that's just like that's all I need and I'm happy. Oh, and it, it, Elvis it, sandwich, peanut butter, banana. Put some put some bacon in there. Whew. Oh, I'm really? Cooking. That might be a mm. much. That's a look. It caused Elvis to die, maybe, but like undeniable. <laughs> but worth it. Was it was so good. It killed him. I it might killed have to Elvis. Try that out. If we're going simple stuff that like I can actually make, I will say um, Nutella with some fresh strawberries in there really hits. Oh yeah. Put mm. that yeah. Put that on a skillet. You got stew going. I didn't put it on a skillet. <laughs> Should I be putting it on a skillet? Yeah. Hell yeah. Do like a grilled cheese with like strawberries and Nutella? Yeah. I mean, no cheese, but like I'm saying cook it like a grilled cheese. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I get yeah. you. Uh, anybody grow up with fluffer nutters? I, I think man, so. I Peanut butter like, and marshmallow fluff? Conceptually, oh, no. I was like, I was thinking this is... Butters. Never mind. Like <laughs> opening up that jar, I was like, this is God's gift to man. Like this is perfect as a child. But the moment you actually try to spread that on like a piece of white bread, it like everything falls apart and you just hate yourself. It just doesn't work. Wow. So I don't know. Sorry, Leo. that happened to you. <laughs> I'm not going to deny your experience. It just tears up the bread. I don't know. Maybe I had maybe it wasn't fluffy enough. Maybe it was too old or something. Mm. But it soured my opinion on it for the rest of my life. Uh, let's see. Uh, yo, call me Rob says, when did you know your favorite game was your favorite game? Was it while you were playing or at some point after you finished? I think it's got to be after. Yeah, it's like my my like way of determining favorite game is like, how much am I thinking about it? Mm. Yeah. Mine, I do have uh, specifically Ocarina of Time. Uh, spoiler alert for Ocarina of Time when you fast forward in time and you wake up as an adult, uh, that whole sequence, you, you go to a church, you, you know, put your sword in the stone, you sleep for seven years and you wake up as an adult and you leave the church and the world has changed. And it's scary. That, that moment was so impactful to me. Like while it was happening, like I felt like I was witnessing something holy, like, you know, like I didn't like in Ocarina of time, you roll everywhere to get there faster. I felt like what had happened was just too big and I couldn't even roll. Like I had to walk out of the church slowly because it was so affecting and, and just like, I couldn't believe what had happened. No story before or since has affected me that radically of just like unexpected shift coming. And like, 
and it was truly at that moment that I was like, this is this is a, my favorite thing. This is my favorite video game. I'm going to be chasing this experience for the rest of my life in video games. I'm going to have That's a Zelda wild. themed wedding. That's right. Yep. But yeah, so I knew I knew well I was playing, but I, I recognize that that's uh, kind of odd. No, I knew while I was playing too. Uh, Hitman, when Paris came out, the first episode of Hitman One, when they're doing it that way, beating the level first or second time and unlocking a new starting location, something about that just stimulated my imagination so much, and I've always like loved new things in games, indie games that try new things and new spaces but i've in my heart of hearts really continuously sought out the triple a experience right like in a pretty world with good animations responsive controls like that is just what i respond to and end up returning to over and over again and that was like oh this is that kind of triple a experience that i love but it's introducing like mechanics and ways to play it that i haven't seen anything like close to it it immediately hit me as so fresh and so Again, stimulating. Like it, my mind just spun out of like, wow, here's all the things I can do now that I have this like totally unique, cool new unlock. Where I'm Hell a waiter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, uh, Kevin Cooper or Cooper Cooper says, "Hello, Min Max. What is your favorite wor- way to traverse in a game? Riding a horse, a vehicle from a specific game, or just jumping around with some powers?" Thanks. Well, you know it's not a car because it's not as fun as real life. So that's out the window. Be traversing in Spider Man, so that would be with powers. I'm trying to think if anything feels better than that movement in itself. Um, yeah, I mean, Jen, that's it for me. Like being being like controlling a character with abilities, whether that's web swinging or just like crazy jumps. That's that does it for me. Like I'm I'm immediately on board if that part of the game is fun. I uh, like uh, grapple hook hang glider or parachute combo kind of just cause or arkham kind of pulling yourself and then kind of trying to figure out trajectory and you know floating afterwards yeah uh like wall runs and jumps titanfall 2 uh though honestly like recently the fortnite slide feels so good i know they Mm -hmm. just copied it from apex legends but like the slide in Fortnite, maybe because the map is so hilly and you can just be at the top and go like all the way to the bottom, like man, they are they are cooking with that slide. Like it feels so good to slide down a hill in Fortnite. A slide where you go faster and further when you're sliding down a hill. Nothing yeah. beats that. Yeah. Shield surfing. True. The shield breaks great. too quickly, and I know that's, that's my own shoddy I'm... craftsmanship, but you know, I go like two <laughs> inches with that thing, and then it just bursts yeah. out and it seems... Put a card on it. Yeah. Fuse it with a cart. Skateboard. Uh, Jeff, and what were you going to say? Uh, negative. What were you going to uh, <laughs> shit <laughs> yeah. uh, crap all over? Uh, out of, uh, out of all the, the degradation that's still in, I'm okay with 99% of it, but I wish just the shields, you could just, you could just surf on a shield and not have it break. Yeah. Before you actually, the I, yeah, like did, they're like, did you know you could break your shield in two seconds? Try this hack, and I'm like, I hate it when I use this hack. Yeah. I do, I do think if they just that is something I think Jeff and I think you guys in Gen two, I think you guys are right. Like, if 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 it didn't do damage, right? I don't think that would hurt the game. I don't think that would break the game. It's no. not like you're using the shields to. I'm sure hurt, someone would use know. that to break it, but it's such a it's a game made to be broken, so it's like yeah, yeah, you know, but. I don't know. I guess you need consistency or whatever. But <laughs> Whatever. Uh, Bryce Blackmore says, what's your favorite casual greeting? Howdy. Good day. Sup. I like yo. I, I find yo I say yo in text chat, but never in real life. I, maybe that's what it is. I use yo in like Slack a lot. Like I'm like, yo, and then here's what I need from you. <laughs> Um, I like, hey, what's good? I don't, I don't feel good. like it might not come up that often in real life because it's so, like, friendly. I think a lot of times if I'm saying hey to someone, maybe if I haven't seen them yet, I might not open with what's good, but that's usually what I say, like, on shows and, and things. Mm-hmm. If, yeah, I get a, I think... if I get on a call with any of my siblings or parents, I do an obnoxious thing that my dad would do, which is answer the phone going, yellow. 
<laughs> I, I don't know where that came from or, or why I started. I, I guess once You're I became a dad time. myself, yes, it's yeah, that happens. It's very annoying. Yellow's good. Yeah. What is the uh, what was the uh, greeting that Alexander Graham Bell was trying to ahoy ahoy? That's what mm-hmm. he wanted everyone to answer the telephone with when he invented the telephone. Yeah, ahoy, and ahoy. if you don't, you're disrespecting him. That's right. And which is why I believe Mr. Burns in The Simpsons answers the phone. He says, ahoy, ahoy. Oh, I think my God. That's, what that's wrong. I didn't that's think terrible. I had more to learn about The Simpsons, but here we are. <laughs> <laughs> but I do like that. I should start answering. I mean, I never answer the phone, really. Like, I don't take a lot of calls. So maybe I should just commit to that and just say, ahoy, ahoy. Yeah. That's overreach, like, though. Just just because that's... you invented the phone, you don't get to decide how what people say when they answer it. I think it's well, good wait, to don't be. You? Well, I feel like <laughs> no. he was like offering a solution. You know what I mean? Like right. there are a lot of questions mm. people were probably asking about this phone business. Like, what am I supposed to say? He's like, you could say ahoy ahoy, and then people were like, I'm not gonna say that. He's like, well, why'd you even ask me? Why did you even <laughs> ask if you weren't gonna use it? <laughs> Uh, why'd you? Yeah, I like the, the the idea of the press conference with Graham Bell being like, "Why'd you guys even ask me? I bring, I gave you the phone. I'm gonna Fun, revolutionize yeah. the communication across the world." A little trust. <laughs> I'm the phone guy. <laughs> uh, all right, let's hear, let's uh, we'll we'll finish up here and then we'll we will definitely do get get a load of this this week. It's definitely happening. It's written down in my notes. Week. I have one ready to go. But uh, Graham, uh, excuse me, Gabe, Gabe Brandolino says game time. The sheer number of crossovers in Fortnite is staggering and easy to lose track of. Let's play. Was this thing in Fortnite? And he's nice. he's got a very long list here, so we can just kind of all uh, tackle these. Um, Aquaman. Was Aquaman in Fortnite? Yeah, that's yeah. right, Leo. He was. Yeah. Oh, OK. Oh, Maybe they'll just all be yes. <laughs> I know. Uh, Spider-Man. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Seven different times. Among I saw us. The emote. Yes. yes. The backpacks. The back bling, at least. Okay. See, I didn't know. I wasn't. I wasn't sure about that. Uh, Death Stranding. No. No. That's a no. Surprisingly, don't yeah, you think make it that happen, though. Up in there? Give me yeah. that little baby. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Simple. It's the perfect back bling. Are you joking? It is. Uh, let's see. Um. Uh, LeBron James. Yes. <laughs> I want to say no. He yes. No. He, he had a like, whole. He had a like King LeBron set. Oh, I had no idea. I missed that. Uh, Ariana Grande. Yes. Yep. I'm so sad I don't have that skin. See, Ariana, Ariana oh, Grande is it. like so. <laughs> I, I am so jealous that I did not just download the game and start buying stuff when that dropped. She's in the Final Fantasy universe too. Like in one of the mobile games, you can get her. Oh, yeah. She's one of the icon fights in 16. <laughs> <laughs> That's that bunny outfit that she wears, right? Uh, Madonna. No. No. Ooh. No. Okay. Madonna's still time. There. There's still time. Uh, I don't know. Last I heard from her, she was busy with NFTs. So, uh, The Walking Dead. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But I don't remember them being there. Uh, no. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Bruno Mars. Yep. No. Yeah. Yep. Uh, my, my friends still really? do the 24K magic. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about the songs part. Yeah. Uh, Taylor Swift. No. No. She is not. Uh, Everyone would know if she was there. Surprisingly or not surprisingly? I don't know. I it's I don't kind of surprised. I feel Swifty. like I so I, Swifties would go crazy for anything anything that's Taylor. So I feel like But does she care? Funniness. But she doesn't I mean Taylor Taylor Swift does not like half ass anything. And so like I don't think she would do it because like she would not have full control over the like usage of it. Right. I don't think she'd want to be running around with a gun either, probably. Yeah, like she seems I don't know, like, you seen bad blood? <laughs> yeah, but like, good point. I don't, I don't know. I just don't see the killer in her. You know what I mean? Like, uh, RoboCop. Yeah. 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 Terminator. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Aliens. Yep. Yes. Yep. Predator. Yes. Yes. Is that the same Solid thing? S- like, I don't understand. There are different things, different movie franchises that overlap for two bad movies that we don't talk about. I felt like it, okay. For some reason, it's just it's just Alien versus Predator. Like I didn't realize they were doing their own thing. Like I don't <laughs> yeah. know. I'm not I'm not following. I'm sorry. Uh, Solid Snake. No. 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 Though he will be soon, right? Konami's yes. Konami's letting things Good go over here. Uh, Resident Evil. Yes. Yep. Yep. Uh, Ezio Auditore. Yes. 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 Katamari. 
No. No, I wish. Oh, but should. That'd be so good. Uh, goat Simulator. Yes. No? Apparently, yes. I oh. have the skin. for It's like a What's goat wearing a crop top. It's really weird. Nice. That's pretty good. Yeah, okay. okay. You got all like the good skins. We need like, can we do like a, skin, a Fortnite skin tour? Mm. On, like, a I'd love that. Tour? That's a good tour. <laughs> New show <laughs> plus. <laughs> skin just tour. call it skin tour. Don't put Fortnite in there. Just see if people vote for skin tour. <laughs> uh, Destiny. Yes. Yeah. That little really? thing that was... is in there. Is it really? I don't know. I don't play know. Destiny, so I don't know what that orb thing is. Ghost? Like. Yeah, I Ghost. I think, yeah. That was that one like weirdly surprised me. I feel like Destiny would have stayed away from there. Um Metroid. No. 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 Yeah, Nintendo's no Nintendo not stuff touching in that now. Yeah. Well, I I mean they're they've done weird stuff like that before, but Give uh, Mario a gun. They're gonna it's either gonna be like all in or none, right? They're they're gonna do a whole season that's Nintendo and you can only get it on Switch and Epic's not gonna do that, so never mind. They're out. Uh Halo. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I have the car. One of the few things I bought in that game. I bought the Kratos skin. I bought the Goku skin. I bought the Warthog. Those are like the three things I've bought in that game. The Holy Trinity. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh Transformers. No. Yep. New season. Really? Yeah. Oh, he's, so the, really? he's the level I 100 skin, yet. Optimus Prime. Oh my gosh. Uh Pirates I'm of the Caribbean. With my culture. The Pirates of the Caribbean. Yes. Yes. No, Jack apparently. Sparrow. You think he would be? Well, in there, I though. dreamed that. Wow, I have a vivid memory of that. <laughs> of course, you're thinking of Kingdom Hearts, the, the uh, Fortnite of its time. Uh, I love this next one just conceptually. There's no, there's no world where this ever happens, but Spirited Away. <laughs> <laughs> no. Awesome. Just like flying down to the the ground with the dragon. That would be incredible. And would also make me mad. And I would be like, I'm not paying for that. <laughs> I, I believe we already know that Miyazaki would call it an insult to life itself. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> he has to pass away before that happens. So I don't think that's happening. Uh, My Hero Academia. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I, I considered buying Deku. I like Any, that show. People with those, an when I see those anime skins coming for me, I start running the other way. I'll tell you, <laughs> I do not. I get clipped by every single person wearing any of those skins. That's why oh, that's it's there. Uh, James Cameron's Avatar, Jacob's favorite game. Nope. No, surprisingly. Uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, the other Avatar. No. No, apparently, which is surprising. Uh, Dune. Wait, yes. Dune? Yeah. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Which I think I'd have to do the research, but I think... Um, I'm sorry, who played Mary Jane in Spider-Man and she's in Dune? What's the actress? Yeah, yeah, Zendaya has two, yeah. uh, she has two skins, I is think. She, is she the only actor who has, like, multiple skins of different characters they've played in Fortnite? I think so. Yeah, okay. Uh, the board game Monopoly. No. <laughs> Apparently, yes. They don't have really? the details, but I don't know. Maybe you can put a little metal. It's been a while since I've seen that. <laughs> Uh, the licensed brand Q-tips. No. <laughs> yeah, that's a no. But that would okay. be pretty great. I thought maybe they had like the the freaking melee weapon could be like a big Q-tip or something. <laughs> that's <laughs> I mean, easy, uh, yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, the the other another licensed brand Segway. No. <laughs> Apparently, yes. According to um, okay. Gabe Brandolino here, I don't know how Segway is in there, but apparently you can <laughs> probably just a branded visor. Or so, yeah, or something. Uh, and then the last one here, Galaxian, the classic arcade game. Yes. 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 Yeah. Because it's, it's weird. Mm. Okay. Yeah. The other one I would have thrown on this list, uh, Gabe, to try to throw us off is Radiohead. Because Radiohead does have a Fortnite thing. <laughs> yeah, they have. I have their <laughs> like, audio. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, honestly, I'm kind of salty about it because it's like, I think it's. I don't remember which of his Kid A or Amnesiac or like the blended album they did. It's, of it's it. not a good song. No, it's like so they could bad. have picked a better song it is for like the menu the, track. It's like it's the worst like selection snippet loop. It's just like and I know people who like maybe don't like Radiohead would be like, that's what Radiohead sounds like. But it really is just noises. Like low, <laughs> yeah. weird noises. And I'm like, man, I gotta take I just left it on for a while for the culture, but I was like, I gotta switch this out. Now I have yeah. some nonsense song about cats, so it's which is way better than the radio song. Uh yeah, Janet and I have long been pushing for uh the Lotus Flower song from or the Lotus Flower dance from the, the music yes. video. Yes. Tom York's like that we let's get that in Fortnite right Did away. Did you play that 
with that weird PS5 thing. I can't remember if we talked about that on the show. Hell yeah, I love that yeah. thing. Did that we thing talk I recently about made a video about it. Really? I need to go check that out. I uh, we t- I tried to make it uh, the year that it came out. I I pushed for it to be like the greatest work of art of that year. Okay. Uh, I really loved it. I w- I want them. I. I'm not as big VR guys as sure. Leo and Jacob, but I would love for that to get a VR adaptation. Yeah, that'd be to fun. just walk around in there and listen to that music. Ah, I would be in heaven. But anyway, that's it for questions. Uh, let's see, question of the week: Does anything stand out for anybody? We got greetings. We've got Fortnite quiz. Cars. Cars. Cars is cool. Cars is good. Cars like the, is good. The kids' game, just because of the inside into your daughter's gaming habits was fun the phone yeah. thing that had the hoi hoi part was fun <laughs> hoi hoi. uh i, I kind of like chat. Chat. i did like sandwich I, chat a lot. sandwich chat uh that's what we almost called the podcast actually before we settled on min max was sandwich chat um i i kind of like cars because i was sort of surprised by that i really thought Me we too. were all just gonna be like yeah Video, cars and video games way more fun but uh no it went the other way how's everybody feel about that i, I, I don't want to make the call one thumbs up okay here we go henry chandler thank you henry chandler for that question question of the week and guys now without further ado without me forgetting it's time for a little something called get a load of this I assume that's enough time for the musical stage. I was just about to ask, like, how do you know how long it is? Like, I don't know how long. I'm that not is. sure. Uh, yeah, um, uh, Janet, you you've got something for us, right? Yeah, I do, and this is just me tabbing over it, and you hear my clicks and my clacks. So apologies for that. But get a load of this. Um, this is a TikTok that I saw that highlighted the fact that there are people that have um recipes on their gravestone, like because you can put you know whatever you want on there. And this person oh. is going around creating the recipes. So that's what their TikTok's about. Wow. And they said that they visited six of 23 gravestones, including the graves of uh, Naomi Odessa Miller Dawson, who had a spritz cookie recipe, Kay Andrews, who had a fudge recipe, Constance Galbert, who had a date and nut bread recipe, Annabelle Gunderson with snickerdoodle cookies, and Margaret Davis with blueberry pie. And I just think that's really cool. You know, we sort of touched on it a little bit earlier in the show with like, talking about venba and the idea of food and culture and i think a recipe being so meaningful to someone to have it on their grave and then being able to i think re-honor that person and also have a connection with a stranger like that through food there's something really cool and beautiful about that um and in you know i think there's a lot of different cultures that acknowledge the lightness that can be in the wake of death you know like it being latin like doing day of the dead stuff and having the ofrenda which is also a very food-based tradition thing um yeah i think there's something really beautiful about that so uh you know i'll link below for all this stuff and you guys can check it out that's right uh jacob you got something uh i do it's um it's academic get a load of this summer for me specifically um one of my favorite authors is named patricia lockwood and as well as writing books she also writes uh for the london review of books uh, and today she released uh, an 8,000 word piece that is uh, nominally a review of um, uh, The Pale King by David Foster Wallace, but is really just um, writing about David Foster Wallace as a writer in the year 2023. Um, and she is uh, just such a beautiful writer. And I think that you will like, I think reading her is just like, if you want to be a better writer, uh, you should read. Uh, Patricia Lockwood. Um, uh, there's a part where she's writing about Infinite Jest, um, and she says, uh, it's like watching someone undergo the latest possible puberty. It genuinely reads like he has not had sex. You feel not only that he should not be allowed to take drugs, but he shouldn't be allowed to drink Diet Pepsi. Um, <laughs> but despite that, it's actually like a very uh, nuanced and, and I think a wonderful look at him, uh, you know, with everything in mind. Uh, so yeah, go go read this if you want to read just some good long form writing on uh, an author. Uh, I just finished reading uh, Priest Daddy, Jacob. M- maybe my favorite book. Yeah, I, I I liked it. Yeah, it's um there was I highlighted a lot of stuff that really made me laugh. I was trying to pull up one real quick, but I couldn't find it. So never mind. See, I, it, I I can't even say the name of the chapter because it is too uh, explicit, but the chapter about her and her mom going to a hotel together is like yeah. one of the funniest things I have ever read. 
That's good. Yeah, and I understand why you can't share the name of it because it's <laughs> explicit. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jeff, uh, Mark Yafava. Yeah, get a load of this. Uh, after so many months, I finally found an AI story that's uh, actually kind of good. So uh, this one is from we'll be uh, the judge Big of that. Think. It's uh, new AI translates 5,000-year-old cuneiform tablets instantly. And it's basically, apparently, uh, there's an ancient language called Akkadian. Uh, and archaeologists have, have like, gathered over a million uh, texts that were basically written in cuneiform into, you know, like, clay tablets that have survived much better than other ancient languages. But there's only, like a couple hundred people who can actually translate them. So there's basically just this impossible backlog that uh, they can never hope to get through. But somehow they have trained AI on uh, translating them, and they say it basically works like Google Translate, where you just it can look at the writing of these ancient tablets and spit out the text. And it's not always perfect, but it, it like gives the actual translators a huge, you know, like step up in terms of uh, being able to get through this. So someday we'll be able to uh, unlock a bunch of ancient language. Um, and that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Better, use of, better use of the technology than putting editors out of business, right? Yeah, translators <laughs> out of business, right, Jeff? Um, yeah. <laughs> they seem to hate their jobs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, by the way, uh, Jeff, the, the, the quote that I highlighted from Pre-Staddy, to me, sounded like a description of Radiohead music, which is why it's relevant. Uh, she talks to us, she called something a selection of electronic music that sounded like robots making up their own religion from scratch, which I think is the perfect <laughs> way to describe Radiohead. That's uh, true. Hey, get a load of this. I found this website. I think I found it through TikTok initially, but it's called forgotify.com, like the word forgot, ify.com. And it is a website that plays clips of random Spotify songs that have zero plays. So it looks cool. at Spotify songs that have had zero plays and it will randomly pull one of those for you and play like a 30 second clip. And I, I heard some weird Russian hip hop and some like really old timey music. And it's, it's really, it's, it's fun. It's fun to click through it and try it out. My girlfriend found a, a Spotify song with zero plays. That was a rap song. And one of the bars is, uh, Call me Harry Potter because I always got a book. <laughs> and that's paid off for a, like a full year. We keep saying that to each oh, other. So that sounds great. Fictional character famous for always <laughs> carrying a book around with him. <laughs> yeah. that, that is hilarious. I love that. Oh my God. Uh, hey, Leo, you have a, you get a lot of this? I'm pivoting because talking about great writing reminded me of this quote I wrote down from a book I read recently because I can read too. Wow. It wasn't uh, doubt. It wasn't doubt. Don't, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it says something that I felt attacked. Uh, from, <laughs> yeah, no. I'm like, glad I no went one, first, all these bookos. Right. No One Belongs Here More Than You by Miranda July. It's a quote about sitting on the floor. <clears throat> I walked down the hall and saw that Teresa was sitting on the floor next to a chair. This is always a bad sign. It's a slippery slope, and it's best to just sit in chairs, to eat when hungry, to sleep and rise and work. But we've all been there. Chairs are for people, and you're not sure if you are one. That resonated with me as someone who likes to sit on the floor. I like that. Love it. That's good. That's good. Get a lot uh, of it. But unfortunately, oh, oh, he got it. Oh, <laughs> we'll, right. we'll count that. Jeff, yeah. Okay, Jeff needs yes. to get a load of this police. I think Someone's it's time to call do Jeff it. him out yes. as, as a do Gallic it. cop, you know? Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, uh, Jeff, you got one from the community? Yeah, get a load of this. This one's from Leafeon, um, who said, this is legitimately one of the coolest things ever, and he's not lying. It's a YouTube video from Silva Gunner, and it's just called Shop Fusion Col Collab. Uh, and it's basically a bunch of artists got together and made, uh, like, they recreated video game, in-game video game shops. Um, but they strung them all together, so it will be it will be a shop from one game selling items from the next game in the line, and and then it cuts to that game, and they kind of it goes in a in you know like through thirty different games or whatnot. Not all the games actually like have the in-game shops, so they they're just kind of capturing the vibe of that game and and creating what a shop would look like, and it's just ridiculous production values and really really well done they have music you know from all the different games or in the style of all those different games 
and it's definitely worth checking out. Cool. Well, thanks everybody for tuning in. This was uh, kind of ended up being a, a longer one, which I apologize for, or maybe you're welcome. I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure uh, how you feel about it, but please take whichever one of those uh, you would like. Uh, yeah, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, we have The Deepest Dive. The plan is to record that uh, Tuesday night coming up. Uh, the the cast is going to get mixed up a little bit, I believe. Jeff, um, Jeff, um, he might be there. I don't know. He might not be. It's a big game. We're not putting any pressure on him. <laughs> or maybe I am by, uh, by mentioning it right now. Uh, but otherwise, you know, tune in to all kinds of mid-max content. I don't know if anyone has anything uh, to plug. We have, you know, New Show Plus is still going strong every week. Um, Summer Games Fest extended vlog. Uh, oh, right. Still yeah. really proud of that. And the shorter versions are coming out in the next few days. Hell yeah. Cool. But uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Um, I'll be back hosting again next week with a, with a different crew. I'm looking forward to it, though. Thanks so much, everybody. Be good. Have fun. Let's go. Let's go.